Well, hello everyone in the chat. I see a lot of people commenting on my supposed lateness, but there's method to that madness. There are very good reasons for delaying the stream by 15 minutes. Anyway, we might talk about that in a sec. Welcome to everyone in the chat. Today we have a very fun, interesting and positive discussion stream. There's lots of great things to genuinely look forward to that we're going to talk about today. Very interesting stuff. That uh, It's been on the back of my mind for ages. I've gotten lots of information and now it's time to really get into them. And there's lots of really good stuff. I am joined, as always on these discussion streams, by someone who is coming up on the screen as P. Say hello, P. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's because I had streamer mode. <laughs> it's the new streamer mode thing, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Strange, eh? Yeah, good day, everyone. How are we doing? It's me, P. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for this is the new username change thing happened, and I've talked about this on Twitter. I mentioned it even on my last Twitch uh, Victoria 2 stream, I think. Um, what is it? Yeah. If you're on streamer mode, which is automatic when you turn on streaming stuff, software on Discord, and it's really helpful actually. It's what allows you to have on your Discord username on the top right of a server that you're streaming and it goes purple. It's, us it's useful. Um, it streamer mode is designed to make your Discord private so that you can effectively show it on stream without leaking DMs information and stuff. So now they, they hide people's usernames, post username change, unique username. Let me get the new background music on. So, if I can explain this, they hide people's usernames. If someone's display name is the same as their username, it shortens it to the first letter and three dots. In this case, it's P. The first time I saw this was Zombie Freak 115 and he, he managed to get his full username. So I saw him announcing some new campaign on Vic Union, and his username was just Z. And I thought, what the fuck is Zombie doing? Is he going full Z? <laughs> and I was like, what? Uh, and then I saw Nurse Reno also announcing his ca uh, his uh, campaigns over on his server. And it was just N. And I thought, well, that's more like Nurse Reno than uh, yeah. the other one. <laughs> but <laughs> no, this is in such a weird change for the stream. And it's actually annoying me on this stream now because it's just... So, PyTrucker, if you were to change your display name right now, it should show something else, if you want to. But for, if it's like this, it's, it's just I've got, I've got username PyTrucker, display name PyTrucker, so hold up. So wait, it needs to be shorter? What was the, what was the uh, formula again? Uh, anything other than your username as a display name, and it'll come up, because it's different. Remy Down Under was complaining about it and pointing out how his friend Zorin the Bear had been renamed to Zed. He didn't even make the connection to Razia. Oh, I did immediately because I'm I see it everywhere. There we go. Pi, there you go. Instead of P, I'll just be Pi. You're lucky to get the username Pi Chucker. I didn't get mine. I was. I don't get it anywhere else and get on Twitch or anything. And it's always the people, uh, they have no videos, they've got no streams, you know, account inactive entirely, and you know, you have to be pie chucker, I don't know, some uh, number I, combination. I've already told the story about my username experience with the new Discord update, so I'm just going to leave that. We don't want to dwell on this crap. Oh, Discord. Discord has been going down a shitty path with all these changes. I mean... Especially this username one, it's so bad. And I'm just waiting for TeamSpeak to... I mean, last time Discord made some weird changes that people didn't like. TeamSpeak was active, going a little bit viral on Twitter or whatever, with its uh, saying, come back to us, essentially. But what have they done? I don't think TeamSpeak has done much. Have they even changed? Have they come in to try and... I don't know, pick up people that are getting disaffected by Discord? I don't see them. I don't see them doing anything. I never really used TeamSpeak, but I used Vin uh, Ventrilla. Did you use that? Uh, no, I never did. I think that might have been before my time. It was like a really, really early one, was it? Yeah, it was sort of for like uh, mid, late 2000s. Yeah, that would have been my Xbox 360 days anyway, so I missed that. Yeah. We were... I played World of Warcraft. It was big for World of Warcraft. Yeah. We're getting into what should be the discussions at the end of the stream already. Getting mm. into our past. <laughs> so, this stream is all about different 
projects re related to the Victorian era grand strategy genre, of which there are quite a few. And we're going to talk about the City Skylines 2, we're going to mention the latest Victoria 3 nonsense, have a wee laugh towards the end. But the first thing I'd like to do, before, you know, without further ado, I recently released my video Victoria 3 Strongest Defender and uh, loads of interesting comments came on my video. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the video specifically itself, if you want to know about, about it and what it was, just go and watch it. But loads of really interesting comments happened, and like I asked at the start of the video, no one gave any hate to other content creators or anything. They were all really intelligent, constructive comments, for the most part. Oh yeah, and like the stream, like PyTracker said, please. Like the stream, definitely. And, if you if you would be so kind, we would greatly appreciate Super Chats over here on Spudgun Official. You they can keep ask the a lights question. on. They keep the lights on, Spud. Yeah. You know. It's hard, it's hard times in New Zealand. It's hard times keeping the lights on. You're doing you're doing the Lord's yeah. work. It's hard time in Britain, but it's even harder times in New Zealand. They're getting fucking flooded. Flooded. I'm uh I'm ankle deep in water right now. He's he's fucking he's calling in from a boat out on the street. Super, yeah, <laughs> super super chats will help with uh, get my trench foot medication that I need now. Palaya, thank you very much for the 12 that's a year of youtube channel membership though so thank you very much a whole year of forgetting to disable you're not forgetting to disable it you're <laughs> willingly supporting the channel anyway um another thing well yeah you can give a super chat if you want to ask a question at any point you can drop a super chat we'll we'll answer them through the stream we're not going to wait to the end but if we're talking about something we'll come back to it after we finish the point it's just going to be an open-ended, flowing discussion with some set topics that we will make our way through. Um, we'll just see how it goes. I haven't structured a, a stream like this really properly. And we're going to try it. So the first thing I wanted to show... Hold on, let's see if this will work. Oh, let me turn these off. Boom, boom. Oh, another thing, by the way, uh, throughout these discussion streams, I always had the chat on the side of the screen. I've gotten rid of that because it's completely redundant because you have your own chat on your YouTube window, uh, both now and after the stream. So it's pointless me having it as well to double it up, right? Right, so <laughs> let's get the first topic we're going to look at here. My video and the comments because there were so many interesting... Have you read through the comments yourself at any point in this, Pie Chucker? I have. I'm going for a, a fresh look. You can and look yeah. with me as we discuss through them. Yeah. Let me turn the music down a bit. Okay, so I released this video and the comments were really nice. Especially, well, I mean, near the top, they're kind of shorter, more snappy comments. But as we go down, you'll find really, really, really intelligent comments that I want to just highlight and respond to here. Because, yeah, there's no real other place to highlight them in a video or a stream. It's, it's a good way to do this. So, um,. What do you think? What do you think of these ones at the top here, Pychaka? These are the smaller, more snappy comments. Any favourites? Big three blew up. No, I'm stopping higher. <laughs> Farm, but that's clever. It's good. There's, there's a couple of good ones here. He was not a he was not a five defence general. There's yeah, no, there's a couple. There's a couple of good ones here. They deserve they deserve to be at the top. The Luddite one is good because uh, Hammurabi's Luddite analogy really does fall apart under any scrutiny. <laughs> Lord Lambert said that, mainly in his stream as well. The Luddites, like the factories that replaced the stuff that Luddites were in were absolutely horrible. So in this case, in this analogy, Victoria 3 is the replacement for Victoria 2, which was the old methods of production, which were in the home, they were nice, they were, you know, organic. And then you come in and make these horrible, horrible factories with terrible conditions. And that's the progress. That's the good stuff, apparently, in this analogy. Anyway, um, what do we have here? The only way game companies will ever change is when consumers say no to garbage. Uh, you're welcome, I'm continuing the fight. Yeah, people don't do this. It's, it's a lonely fight though, Spud. It's a lonely fight. It is, and this goes to that whole narrative like... Uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't actually want to get too into this, I'm realising. I don't want to go too far ranting about Victoria 3. I just wanted to give some comments a big a bit of a highlight. Jim Boob here. Jim Boob always gives great comments. I love him. Uh, he says, you know, it's crazy. There's a middle road option that worked. And that middle road is something we're going to talk about when we come to Guild of Destiny. Because that's directly what they're doing. Right? 
Yeah, no, I've, I'm very impressed with uh, Guild of Destiny and what I've seen so far. And uh, this is interesting as well, though. Is if I click on this video, I'm logged out. I'm not logged into an account on YouTube here. This is what you get recommended purely from this video of mine. You get Tommy K, you get College doing Victoria 3, you get EU4, and then you get a load of my videos. And then you get ISP. It's a little interesting insight into some YouTube algorithm, Grand Strategy. Buy Grand Strategy game. What the fuck? I have to micro the armies and actually have to play the game? Literally, what are these people wanting out of the game exactly? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Travis Bickle PFP, if that's what I see there in the cinema. That's a reference to my Boko and Meme video. Yeah, there's a... Uh, it's interesting situation. And uh, there's a long... A good comment. Bad PFP in name, but good comment. Uh, and I can say that without, you know... I, you know, I can just criticise... I don't know. And that person's in the chat as well. You need to update. Get a good name in PFP, my friend. Come on. You can't, you can't go around looking like this. Imagine like, imagine going out of your house, putting on a mask that was like that, and that's what you identified with your name. You wouldn't do that in public. You'd have some decency, imagine, right? Imagine your kids. They're going to be like, you know, I don't know. Dad, YouTube was a big thing back then. What was your username? No, think of it. Think of the children. <laughs> you know that World War One propaganda poster for recruitment. What did you do during the Great War, Dad? Yeah, yeah. What did you do during the uh, Victoria Three, Victoria Two uh, cultural war? Here was about a comment about him calling me a, a con artist, as Lord Lambert corrects him. Uh, and then we mentioned Open Vic, which is going to be free. Uh, and the main point of everything I'm doing here is for Open Vic, which is going to be free. Uh, we're pushing a free product. That's the scam. And it'll always be completely free. Well, my, uh, said, my, my first username I remember making was for RuneScape, RuneScape like 20 years ago. It was Death Plague 7. That's fantastic. Fantastically edgy. Oh god. My I, first uh, my first username was Catholin, uh, which was a random generation for a World of Warcraft Dwarf Paladin that I had. And uh, everyone uh, bullied me and said that my, my dwarf was called Catherine. And so I ended up uh, making a death knight and changing, changing characters. <laughs> There's one here that says, shut up and work on the Bavaria series. I get that. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I mean, I made this response video, but before it, I was working on the Bavaria series. And immediately after it, I'm working on the Bavaria series. So you don't have to worry about that. Can you imagine that one day your children could be reading your YouTube comments? Uh, that goes out to everyone here. I don't really leave YouTube comments in other videos much. I just respond to ones on mine. Uh, I mean, people mentioning the sponsorship. So this is like, you know, my overall point. That the main thing I wanted to show here is that a lot of people outside my community, when they think of me, they think I'm a really bad... Oh, look, there's, there's this stream. Do you want to watch that? Do you want to live react to our own stream? Uh, anyway, and there's one Proud Bavarian's Victoria 3's end near video. But a lot of people outside of the Spudgon world, which isn't very big, have this impression that we're all just a hateful, negative bunch of, you know, evil bastards, and we all just hate on everything. Which couldn't be further from the truth. Right? Uh, pu publicly, we're very nice. Yeah, we keep that we keep that to our private discussions. We keep that yeah. to the locker room. Before, yeah, before, before the stream. Yeah, me, me and, and Pyshuck, we, just... get, we get racked up for the stream, we get it all out, and then we go, oh, g'day everyone, how are you? What is it Welcome. from 1984, two minutes hate? <laughs> yeah, two minutes hate. We just scream. But they really do have this really bad impression, but if you just come onto the channel, you hop into a stream like this, or you watch this video, look at the comments, it's all constructive, it's kind, there's no hate in any of these comments, and if there were, I would delete it anyway. And we're not here to give hate or anything. It's all good. And then rest in peace, Harambe. So, you know, the comments for this were really good. I actually want to move on to the topics we were going to discuss. What's this? One fun save for every country and football manager from Zealand. Hmm. And these are just He's... recommendations from this video alone, because I don't have anything else. Zealand, is he from New Zealand? Or is he from the Netherlands? I don't know. I'm just going to leave it. 
But then you get Old Britannia. I've watched a couple of videos from this channel. They're really good. Old Britannia. I feel like it's my war analysis sections, but about real history. Mm. No, there's, there's some good stuff here. Book on. Yeah. Well, there, there's some good stuff here, and then there's that, but then, you know. <laughs> anyway. What do we have here? Well, we're going to be jumping... Uh, hello to everyone in the chat, by the way. Hello, hello. And you're right, Lord Lambert. Really good. About the real politic of the 19th century. So, how do we even... Can you introduce this game, Pie Chucker? What do you think? What's Grey Eminence? Or what was Grey Eminence? Grey, Grey Eminence was a attempted uh, destruction of the grand strategy monopoly that Paradox holds. And it's failed. It's over. But it's uh, sort of sort of like a reimagining. Perhaps it takes heavy inspiration from European of Salas. Um, but there's it had some different ideas of where to take things and removing a lot of the uh, feature bloat that exists in Europa in 2023. We're going to talk about and this. We're, we're going to talk about what this project was. Yeah. We're going to talk about what they were aiming for and how it seems to have failed or been put on hold. I mean, technically. They're saying it's on hold, and it's going to be still there. If they can get money, they'll go back to it, but I don't know. It feels, like, uh, it feels like when you go on a break with your girlfriend. Yeah, like... it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's over. Just face it. It's, uh, yeah, it's over. <laughs> uh, and again, you know, you didn't have enough money, and they left. But uh, this is the trailer. I don't know if you can watch what I'm watching, Pachaka. You can try. But they give a bit of a explanation of what the game was aiming to be on this, I think. Witness the dawning of a new era in grand strategy gaming. Dive into a vast world of over one million tiles. A faithful... That was the budget. The whole budget was on this guy. Yeah, so... A beautiful voice. I actually heard, to be fair, that voice actors or narration people in general is very expensive in games and stuff. Maybe that's where they blew their money. Yeah, well, you think about the Stanley Parable, that's the whole game. It's that guy's wonderful, wonderful voice. Yeah. Um, I just want to pause here, because this is the tile system. Something I realized just by looking at this, is this is literally... The tile system here, the hexagon thing, that's the same as Grey Eminence. They were both trying to do the hex system. Or they... Or yeah. Grey... Gilded Dest... No, wait, no. I swear to God, I get both of these projects' names mixed up because they're just so, like G something, right? Gilded, yeah. Grey, and then another word. I meant to say Gilded Destiny, which is the other one, which is a highly positive one that we're really looking forward to talking about. Yeah, I think I think one one immediate piece of feedback that comes to mind is both of these names not particularly good. Grey Eminence and Gilded Destiny. They're not, you know, it's almost like random name generator. It's uh. You know, European Vassalis is great because there's nothing that actually sounds like European Vassalis. I mean, it's a really unique name. Um, or Hearts of Iron is another good name. So, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll give Paradox. They come up with good names. I've been playing yeah. a game called uh, Kingdoms Reborn. And it's like, what is that name? It just doesn't mean anything at all. It doesn't describe the game in any kind of way. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I think. Great Eminence and Gilded Destiny, respectively, their names would be better if the other one didn't exist because they're so similar. Yes, that's fair. Have it's... Pie a voice act for Open Vic. There you go. I applied for the team. I was uh, I was rejected, but I'll yeah. apply again uh, to narrate. I'll do the um, accessibility for blind people who want to play Open Vic. So every time you click on something, it'll be like production interface. <laughs> God, diplomacy, <laughs> political view. <laughs> Sphere of influence. <laughs> <laughs> out of game, out of sync. No, that won't <laughs> yeah. happen. We're not going no, to create that. that. You have to say that in a panic way. <laughs> um, you can join the field of very famous New Zealand actors. Because there mm. are loads. Um, the Jurassic Park guy. Sam Neill, yeah. Um, uh, Tamara Morrison. Yep, I was going to say. Uh, yep. Boba Fett. Uh, Bet. And the guy from The Boys. The guy from Which the I was just mentioning it in the, my Discord, actually. The main... No. The, the supposedly Cockney guy from The Boys is actually a New Zealand actor. 
Oh, there you go. Uh, the Rand. Khan Fantastic. guy. What's his name? Booch? Is, there's uh, Taika Waititi's Jermaine Clement. There's plenty of people. Have you seen the... Uh, oh, hold on. I'm so shocking, actually, about tearing us off, off track. I Carl I Urban. Want... Oh, Carl Urban. Yeah, he plays Jeff Dredd. Love Carl Urban. I don't like him in The Boys because his accent is so bad and over-exaggerated. But I recommend uh, the I, I do not recommend the Sylvester Stallone Judge Dredd movie. It's terrible, but I highly recommend the Carl Urban Judge Dredd movie, which is fantastic. Right. Carl Urban when Carl Rural, Rural walks in. <laughs> Why are we deleting so many messages and retracting messages, based department? What's going on? Um. Anyway. Um, one million tiles, and you're already starting to yeah. see maybe it's a bit. Much? I, I don't know. It's probably all right, but I'm it's gonna, kind of a nothing yeah. point, you know, because you can divide anything into any number. They could say, for all we know, it could be a billion tiles. It means nothing. Yeah, it does depend what you actually do with the tiles or what level of intricacy the tiles yeah. have, I guess. Or if the pops are situated on the tile or in the state, which is the Victoria. The Victoria Three went in and was like, "Oh, look at how many provinces we have." I mean, to be mm. fair, they didn't actually say that. They didn't really. To be fair to Victory, they never actually boasted about their province count, but still. I think the only way they could fuck this up if they had a, uh, an, a, a scarily small amount of tiles. 14 tiles, for example, that would be... You'd be like, whoa. But a million? <laughs> Country-sized tiles. Risk. <laughs> yeah. Russia's three tiles. Frederick's asking in the chat, how many are water tiles? Oh, just uh, 990,000 of them. <laughs> yeah. One million, I clean look, one million water tiles. It doesn't look like there's any water tiles, it just looks like water is one big blob. I don't know. Recreation I'm going to continue this. Earth as it existed in the year 1356. 30, already pausing it, but 1356, they were starting in the Europa Universalis timeline, which is um, the, the scope of the game and the timeline it was expanding into could be one of the problems with it because it's just they're trying to do too much. It goes from 1356 into like 1820 or something mm. into the start i don't know i think they go into the industrial era a bit yeah well, Still uh, europa fate. starts at 1444 and so yeah they have yeah. expanded that quite a bit of any one of over 700 countries from the fractured polities of the holy roman empire to the great mongol hordes of asia each country offers a unique playing experience. Its particular set of laws determine how its society works and how you can interact with it. Construct workshops and manufactories in a bid to urbanize your realm, or cut down the forests of old to make way for croplands and pastures. Seize territory along strategic trade routes to reap monopolistic profit. Now this trade thing here looks phenomenal. I really like the look of this. Well, I, I, we should talk about this in the past tense, but... Mm. I liked the look of this. Yeah. Or, no, I like the look of this thing that used to exist. <laughs> I, don't... I like the look of was. <laughs> and this is kind of reminiscent of EU4's trade system. And the trade system is my favourite mechanic in EU4, a game that I don't really like overall, but the trade in that is great. And it looks like the, the nodes, the links. Victoria 3 attempted something like this, but it was shite. And it, Victoria 3 doesn't seem to have much of a flow of trade. You just sort of go to a country, join their market, and then a line will exist between you and them. I don't know. Well, One thing that I saw uh, as a response to both Gilded Destiny and Grey Eminence is people saying that they didn't like the hex-based look, the aesthetic of it. But I don't understand how, you know, who would want to play Europa from like a Google Maps perspective, you know? It, it, it would be, like, nobody plays with the terrain view on, you know? Nobody plays Europa with just the terrain map mode, that doesn't make sense. Wait, someone with a Chinese name just said it looks a bit Eurocentric. Wait, look, there you go. It, it advertises the amount of playable countries over China with several different Chinese countries. There you go. They were, I, I don't think they were actually meaning to be Eurocentric with this game. They said they offer unique mechanics based on what part of the world. And they even have loads of uh, these 
Mexico, for lack of a better word, Aztec countries, but they're not Aztec countries, only one of them is Aztec. American, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was, but anyway, you know, they had a, they were ambitious, they had great plans that looked good, and they seemed to be relatively quite far along with what they were doing. And then... Well, then they just um, released it like Paradox. Release enough it? enough of a game there. Yeah. I know. Maybe in trying to be the Paradox competitor, they didn't want to fall for Paradox's mistakes. And they actually yeah. do such a thing as a closed alpha instead of going, yeah, actually, this is the release date of the game. Boom. Pre-order, please. Um, so, it, it was so close. I mean, just as it failed, just before it failed, they were starting to push a closed alpha coming and they were promising it to people and they were looking for people to come and play it early. Like, that seemed to be starting to build up and then this happened. 29th of May 2023, which is actually just last month, one month ago now. Feels like a lot longer ago because we've been, I don't know. Uh, do you want to read it in your great uh, voiceover acting voice by Chuck? Do you want to? Okay, all right. Today we're going to give you a general update on the studio and our progress on Grey Eminence. Can we get some, is there any sad violin music or anything? Oh yes, yes, let me get something on, let me get. Uh, uh, Kevin McLeod, what have we got here? Let's see, let's see. <laughs> Kevin McLeod's sad music, sadness playlist. There's one, four minutes called Anguish. That sounds perfect. All right, start reading. Today we're going to give you a general update on the studio and our progress on Grey Eminence. As you know, we've been continuously trying to raise capital behind the scenes to finish the game. Both from venture capital funds and from publishers, during this time we maintained a slow but steady pace of development thanks to the generous contributions of our patrons. Since we've been unable to raise the necessary capital, and since our Patreon isn't large enough to crowdfund the game on its own, we feel it's time to move on to Plan C, obtaining the capital to finish the game ourselves. In practice, this means that the development of Grey Eminence will be paused, since it consumes capital rather than producing it. We want to stress that this does not mean that Grey Eminence is cancelled, nor does it mean that we're disbanding the studio or have gone bankrupt. While Grey Eminence's development is paused, we'll be taking up commissioned work for third parties to develop smaller Unity dots-based games. This will bring in the necessary revenue to pay down our studio's debts, and will accumulate surplus profits with which we will eventually resume Grey Eminence's development. The next announcement you'll hear from us is when we have definitively secured funding for the game. Thank you. Perfect. Went well for music. You just, you read it perfectly. Flawless. That was a beautiful clip. Bank account hacked by Paradox, says someone in the chat. Yeah, Paradox are behind this. I know it. So... The music wasn't yeah. necessarily sad, though. It was more, uh, it was more intriguing. <laughs> it's like I was lying. <laughs> yeah. It was, actually. It, whatever it was, it fit perfectly, and it was good. So, and I, they've, they've used, like, a money-related art asset for the fucking thing as well, which is kind of funny if you think about it. Um, I'm sorry for... I don't want to laugh at this situation, but this is what we do in my stream, and our, me and Pychucker, we kind of just take the piss out of anything. Uh, sorry, it is a seriously bad thing. We mostly take the percent of ourselves, so I'm sure we're fine. Oh yeah, ourselves are the main target half the time. Well, are they? I don't know. It's normally Victoria 3. It's Paradox half, most of the time, really. To be fair. So, what yeah, has happened so here? A, a tragic end. A tragic end. They didn't have enough money, and so they're going to go have to get new jobs to save up money to, to continue producing the game. But this, Spud and I were briefly talking about this before, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Because when you when you were to, to begin this journey of creating this game, you would have had a understanding of sort of, you know, if you, if you had done the necessary preparation, you would have had a rough understanding of what you needed to get to a point, you know, in development. Certainly closed alpha, which is not particularly far in development. Um, and they had probably much more success than they could have possibly hoped for in terms of a very successful Patreon and uh, a huge amount of interest 
that you couldn't have anticipated really and and you know if you were uh, expecting uh, a very you know in your in your wildest imagination they had way way more support and yeah making over a thousand pounds a month and that's probably gone down after this update yeah I, I can't remember exactly what it was before this announcement but they had a huge patreon really big and like you were saying to come out of nowhere a company that someone in the chat asked if they had made a game no uh, no they hadn't to come out of nowhere make a new company start crowdfunding and getting this level of a patreon even now in its post-death state it's making four times as much as i got on my patreon <clears throat> but um <laughs> because they have these big tiers that you know my patreons are people coming and giving a dollar mainly uh and they do advertise loads of stuff on these for their discord which is now their discord is like a graveyard now people are still on there there was so much there was a lot of hype and goodwill on this project i'm not saying right i don't want to say anything bad about this happening like people have raised oh is it a scam and this and that but you can't i don't know people like to say i don't that. i don't think obviously it's not a scam but it's it's amateur hour i think if you wanted to make a, a critique of these people you couldn't say it's a scam they've clearly tried yeah, to well said they're passionate about this they've tried but they have failed and they've failed catastrophically in a way that is if you're a businessman of any sort of report in any kind of way you know and i've i've done lots of business plans and things before in my in my personal life and things and to, and to catastrophically fail with this level of success that you've had how how do you do it you know and because uh spud and i were discussing just before the stream you're not buying assets for a gray eminence you know like you'd buy assets for um uh, first person shooter or something they like bought that. their intro they bought they bought their trailer narrator, I guess. <laughs> yeah their narrator so yeah and, and that's kind of what i'm saying it's wages wages is your entire expense and so how have you planned you know to to fund this game in terms of wages how big is your team and what was your scope uh, you know and that like spud was mentioning that they're, they're asking for a million dollars from a publisher. It's like a million dollars to pay who, what, for how long, and for why. It doesn't make sense. That's a figure that I saw mentioned on their Discord. I briefly had a mm. skim through it to DLC. People are still active on that Discord. Like I said, they had a community developing. It was going somewhere. And then this uh, announcement blindsided everyone. And um, by the way, for Patreon, if you're crowdsourcing something, you might see some like kickstarter or something and it promises a thing like if they raise x amount of money you will get this it never had that what they had with this was this patreon and a patreon doesn't promise that you will get a product if you give us the money it promises you get these roles on discord you invest in us so they haven't scammed any patreon people because the patreon people know what they're getting they're just supporting the company they get their discord roles they have q a priority okay maybe closed alpha access yeah Maybe, That's okay, maybe mentioned. that. Maybe that didn't happen. Uh, maybe. You're paying for a product that hasn't been delivered. Which but I is think my, my not, overall not point scam. Is... Yeah, not a scam, because scam implies intent. You know, I'm trying to take money. Yeah, I've never intended to deliver this product. They've obviously intended to deliver this product, but they haven't, which is the problem. And uh, <laughs> without being too harsh, at least with a scam, you know, you're executing what you intended to do <laughs> and they would have done it if it was a scam they've done a brilliant job well i guess so they're still scamming <laughs> 183 not. people now i guess no yeah, yeah. so they the thing is they close close down the patreon it's insane that they still have it up yeah it is i mean they've comp they've announced that they've basically said patreon investment is not going to be enough to get us a project patreon is not how we're going to fund this project anymore and they still have it and I mean, they did mention in the post actually company having debt, so maybe they'll pay down the debt or something or pay the interest. <laughs> if, Imagining if the it idea, like a, a game. If the, if the idea is to, like, let's say the idea, the working number, this is obviously, you know, take this number with a pinch of salt, guys, but a million pounds, if they were to, you know, that they're admitting that they don't have enough money from the Patreon, it would take 62 years to get enough money from the Patreon to have a million pounds. And that's not including all the money that's taken out by Patreon. And so it's it's a drop in the bucket to the amount of money that they think that they need and so it's yeah it's a bit dodgy having because it's this money's not going to go anywhere 
you know it's it's a band-aid on a bullet wound yeah, I saw a lot of people in their Discord who were Patreons and stuff saying that they were okay with that. They they put forward money on the Patreon to a project. There was never any 100% guarantee that this will happen, but they were happy to support it. And they're upset that it has failed, but not in the sense of being upset against the company for taking the money. They were happy to support it. It didn't work out. And a lot of people aren't hating on it or anything, and that's fine. So yeah something really important though on a, a reddit post they made the developer here has actually replied to a couple of comments so we can get a better a right better idea this is the there's another reddit post that this guy made uh, uh, three years ago that might be of interest but maybe we'll leave that for now uh the most common concerns we've heard are the size of the niche in our team's experience which are both valid but we'll do everything in our power to prove them wrong so he's giving some insights into what happened where it went wrong and i think it's all about the scope of the project it obviously ended up costing more money than they anticipated, and so on. But yeah. And uh, comment, blah, 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 blah. This is really sad. Is there any way to invest in the studio as a marginal investor? I don't know what that even means. See, I'm financially illiterate. We considered the possibility of doing micro-investor seed round. What is this even? What? Do you know? So, so seed, seed capital is like... Um, micro-investing would be like they're offering... Uh, parts of their private company you can buy them for money and then they'll use that money to develop it which so is not a terrible to, idea so it's like, is registered in Bulgaria it is indeed yeah they're sort of like getting shares uh, in a small one, one thing one thing I'll say as well is that this game was on the Valve st Steam store and um, it's something that I was discussing with I've, I've said that too many times it now. is so it was, still on it yeah, yeah and it's yeah it's still on it and if you're at the stage where you're putting the game on the store, you know, and you've, you're here, it just, there's a lot of things that are, you know, I, I definitely don't think these guys have any sort of malice or anything at all. I think they've, you know, they've, they've tried to do something really cool and it hasn't worked out and that happens to, if people are human, that happens. Um, but there's a couple of question marks, you know, it's like, why is it on the Steam store to begin with, you know? If we're so far away from even a closed alpha, there's no reason that it should be on the Steam store at all. It seemed like they were on the cusp of a closed alpha because they were starting to push that and promise it and say to and bring in people for it. They were on the brink of that closed alpha, and then this happened. Like I said, it's weird. And by the way, just I'm confirming that we did have the one million figure here mentioned by the lead developer, owner of the company thingy itself. We do have the one million figure. He does say it. He says. He needs the required capital on the order of one million dollars. And you're left thinking, what do you need that? What's the one million? I mean, there, I don't see him, I don't think there's anything, uh, you know, it's not like he's lying, but I'm just wondering. I don't think he ever says what the one million's for, because he doesn't give those kinds of details, but... Can anyone speculate as to what they need one million dollars for? Wait, can you, I'm, I'm not going to muck around doing the mass for it or anything like that, but can you imagine? how many people you could have on a team and how long you could pay them to develop ga a game for in Bulgaria for a million dollars. Uh, I'm sorry you know? to show, I, I've just gone to the team, I just wanted to quickly see how many people they have on their team. I don't want to dwell on people's real names and stuff there, but th there's a, it is publicly on their website, but they had like what, that was like eight people, seven people on their team. Mm. And then how much, extrapolate, do the math, how much would they be being paid, a full time wage? Ten something. 110? You pay, yeah, you could pay them 110,000, like it'll work for a year. Well, you wouldn't pay them that much, I don't think. Especially for a company that hasn't <laughs> made a game yet. No, and you're living in Bulgaria as well, which is, you know, the wage is not... Yeah. I think the average wage would be uh, a tenth of that. Yeah, so they can live on they can live on uh, 8k a year, surely, in Bulgaria. <laughs> they can get... They can really save on wages since they're in Bulgaria, so sure, what do they need 1 million for? Uh, there will be continuing development post-release. Well, that's something you worry about. Uh, post-release development can be funded by the fucking sales of the game when that happens. But um, running costs for things like the website. Well, OpenVic has a website and it costs like, I don't know, $12 to get the domain or something. I don't know. OpenVic doesn't have any overhead costs yet. Um, it's just using public uh, uh, free Google Doc stuff and spreadsheets. It's not doesn't have any cost yet itself and that open vic by the way is a, something where i've learned a lot about game development from overseeing that project 
Not overseeing it as in the sense I'm commanding it, but overseeing it as in I'm watching and taking interest and in seeing how it's going. I've actually gained a lot of insight, so it's really interesting. But I still, if I'm overseeing that, it's an open source project, so I guess I can't get an insight into what a real monetary based project would be buying, but I don't know. Did he have any more comments? Yeah. Um, I understand your scepticism, but to call the project a scam is unwarranted, says the lead developer. Well, the Patreon did bring in a lot of donations relative to most video game Patreons, which is, by the way, we've said this, this is crazy. How do they do this? Very successful. Mm. It, Very pales successful. In it pales in comparison to my personal investment in the project. So they've gotten one of the most successful video game Patreons crowdfundings ever. And it's barely even a drop in the ocean as to what they actually need and what the lead developer put into the project anyway. A, I, I'm not, I don't say it's a scam either, but I'm saying it, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. All these people... Yeah, I'm saying the same thing. It's just a question mark here. And I think that... Just like, if, if the excuse is we've run out of money, I feel like there needs to be more said to the people that you've taken a lot of money from for the development of your game. You need to explain how you've run out of money. You know, and mm. and if 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 it is such a drop in the ocean, you must have known for a very long time that this is not even remotely close to enough money to run the uh, development of this game. And if he's saying there pales in comparison to my personal investment, yeah, if it's a million dollars, how much money has this guy, has this guy sold his house to make this game? I Why mean, even have a Patreon if you're donating? If you're putting massive amounts of your personal money into mm. the project to fund it, why even have a Patreon, right? If that's if this um what is it like fucking uh one one k at the lowest two k a month as it was at its highest if two k a month on a Patreon is nothing for you and it, that would change my life if I could get my Patreon to that level it completely changed my life if that's nothing to you why do you even have it I'm just throwing out these questions I don't mean anything bad by it and I don't think this is a scam or anything but it's interesting and. I must say for the record, I hope they can sort this out, come back to this game, because it looked very good and promising. And I mean that. Do you agree? I agree. Aye. Oh well. I, I guess that's Grey Eminence. I guess the other thing we, we didn't I haven't mentioned, which is uh It's the fact that I don't uh, wait, hold on a sec, let me find it. I'll get it off the screen first though. Because I'm gonna go into his uh message history to find this. Uh, it's a couple, it's a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah. R slash scams. How do I scam people? <laughs> no, 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 no. No. <laughs> no. Oh. He didn't. Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah, I see a couple of comments from here, Sam. We're not disappointed, but we're confused. I saw someone else saying that we just wanted transparency. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe he did put some posts on the Patreon. You can't know that if he put private Patreon posts up with more info. Maybe they did that. Mm, that's a vehicle. Cool. Someone cool. in the chat asked about refunds. Uh, earlier I did say Patreon is not about that. It's not as if you're putting in money onto a Patreon to guarantee you will get something out of this or you'll get your money back. It's not like that. Patreon is continuous. You give money without any expectations really unless it's a Discord role and it says you'll get that and you get it. Like my Patreon, where you get the Giga Chad roll, guaranteed. Patreon, Patreon's funny like that because there is exceptions to that rule. Like there's uh, podcast Patreons where you pay the Patreon to get access to the podcast. And there's actually, oh, yeah, there's yeah. A, that's one example I can think of. But there are, Yeah, there are more, Patreons many, and videos. Included. Yeah, we are expecting to get the product. Um, and, uh, could, you know, could you make an argument that a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people probably did expect that you know, it says access to closed alpha imminently coming soon, uh, and then all of a sudden the game's kaput. I mean, that does seem to be strange. And you could make an argument that you know these people have been, I don't know, disrespected. They haven't been scammed, but they've been disrespected certainly. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of people on their Discord and other Discords where this has been talked about who felt that way. I don't know if they were actual patrons, but a lot of people are, have really really upset by this and annoyed and angry and have been calling throwing the word scam around i'm not throwing it around but other people have and i'm simply stating they have 
Um, Qu- Quake yeah. Riley says, Patreon, like all crowdfunding, is a gamble, which is true. But you got to think that spread to if it, all online distribution platforms for video games, like buying a game on Steam is a gamble now. People gambled on buying Victoria Three, and they huh, they lost. <laughs> well said. <laughs> you know? Yeah. The pre-order pre-order X game or uh, early access game never leaving early access. I mean, look at games like DayZ that were in early access for, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's all a gamble. Close, close to ten years. But people want to support these projects that don't have paradox behind them, and they want something to. People are really eager. Some of the success of the Patreon for this game must have been that people really want a competitor to Paradox. It doesn't make you anti-Paradox to want that either, although a lot of people no. are. I mean, it would be just fantastic. It would, it'd make, it would make Paradox better if there was competitors to Paradox. Yeah. Exactly. And it might force a race for lower prices, maybe, hypothetically. Now, I've had this on the screen, I haven't mentioned it. This is develop the lead developer, the owner of the Grey Eminence company, in uh, 2020. Three years ago, I over over this, it should show. Feast nah. your eyes on my losses. Minus $689,000 on SPX putts. Whatever the fuck an SPX putt is, he lost 700k on it. And he talked about how he personally massively financed the game, but they still need a million. And here he is losing 700k. Uh, yeah, I well, I, I guess we were talking, I think this whole time, you know, financially irresponsible, you know, probably not really well organized. That's mad. Yeah, I think, it, I don't know if I'm 100% right, but I think a put is a, you're betting that the stock market's going to go up in whatever index that is, SPX. And but this yeah, is, no, this is completely... Stock market did not go up, from, went down. Yeah. This is completely fair game to talk about, I think, because he is publicly on his Reddit, you know, bragging about this or uh, bragging i don't know but he's like publicly showing everyone how he lost 700k uh, this is wait a developer lost that this is the lead developer who created the game yeah um but before the game uh so i think this came out he did this in 2020 this is before the game i i don't know if i can find a date that this game started being developed uh, if you go down to their first posts 2021 Right, so a year before the game, I I'm not going. I'm not saying that this is a scam. Like I've said it, but it's odd, and this happened before the game from the same person. I don't. Know. Loads of people have talked about this, by the way, on the Discord on Grey Eminence's own Discord. It was mentioned. So, but this happened before he started his game. So I'm not. We're not saying that he took the money from Grey Eminence and gambled it. This happened before. Okay, I'll, I'll make two quick points. First one is, if this guy has the money to lose $700,000 in what would have been a few days, then he should have never taken money from Patreons. And if this guy doesn't have the money to lose $700,000 on the stock market, he should have never started a company because it's you're a... You're taking people for their worth, like being an employer. You imagine it. You imagine if your boss at work was like, and he owns the company. Maybe you work at a little company or something like that. It's like, oh, I lost seven hundred grand over the weekend, and you know he's, he drives like a two thousand six Honda Civic. You'd be like, holy shit, how long am I gonna be employed for? You know? It's like, it's yeah. mad. Mm. This, I, I, this is a, yeah. I don't know. I, I think that this has definitely changed my opinion on the entire situation. Having read this, yeah, I don't know. I want to believe the best in people, especially when it comes to what looked like a really promising project, so I'm not... I don't know. Shall we just leave it and move on to some really great stuff that's nothing like yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's over. Now, here, here's the real deal, everyone. Yeah. Here's the real deal. By the way, if you were a great Eminence Patreon supporter who has since cancelled and you're looking for a new Patreon, consider Spudgun Official. I deliver! I deliver the videos, I deliver your early access, I don't do early access anything, but I, you get exactly what I say on the tin. You get deleted scenes, you're going to get deleted scenes from the Bavaria series, just ask any of my existing Patreons in the chat, isn't that right Woven? 
Yeah, and, we, uh, will, yeah. we will empathize with you for your money lost on uh, Great Eminence. And you know what the worst thing is? I, there hasn't been a single super chat on this stream yet. What's you, It's so difficult. We're, we're looking at a guy who can throw away fucking 700k and I'm struggling to make a living myself and I don't even get a super chat. Come on, guys. Mm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's alright. to my knees now. And the fucking water is rising in Pachaka's mm. house, his boat outside his house, because his house is too flooded. He's taking yeah. everything out on a boat. Yeah, it's not good. Help a man out. <laughs> five dollars, but just five dollars a day, you could support a young starving <laughs> kiwi. Get <laughs> <laughs> on face cam and big. <laughs> Nah, this is the face cam. The face cam is here on the top left. There we go. We got a pound. I got a pound. I can buy myself. Well, these in this economy, you can't buy anything for a pound anymore. Pound shops must charge things for like five pounds. P pound shop, pound, well, pound land has been inflated to fiver land. Thank you very much for the pound though, Marty. I do appreciate it. Is pound land actually called five pound, five pound land? No, I'm just what? joking. It should be called That's that now. <laughs> Yeah, we had the we had the two dollar shop growing up, and then they all changed to the dollar store, and everything cost fucking ten bucks. It was yeah. the two dollar shop back in the day. You get your Halloween decorations, that sort of shit. I mean, I remember growing up, we did have shops called Poundland, Pound World, the Pound Shop, that genuinely did sell pretty much everything in it for a pound. Mm. But then mood they rings? just evolved. Hmm? Mood rings. I bought a lot of mood rings from the two dollar shop. Nah, and, uh, I don't know. Looked at my uh, looked at my hand. Oh, man, I'm feeling uh, feeling envy. Coffee money. There we go. Alex Adams. Thank you very much. Spud got gambling. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you switching over to what's that? What's that new uh, streaming platform called? Nah, kick. <laughs> nah. Kick. Yeah, that's it. Funded by the creator of Gilded. No, Grey Eminence. <laughs> you could. Uh, yeah, you could stream yourself pre-ordering uh, Victoria Three again, and then um, <laughs> and then you put that on kick. It's a gambling stream. Well said. Um, so we got Alex coffee money. I don't know where you're getting a coffee for two pounds in this economy, unless you're, I don't know. Uh, no, but seriously, thank you. And marinara sauce, thanks for the one pound twenty-five. Thanks, guys. It's a great name. It's a great name. Marinara sauce, fantastic. Frederick, Frederick. von Stein. Thank you. One dollar sixty-nine. I can maybe put all those super chats together. Bear in mind that YouTube takes seventy percent. No, thirty percent. I get 70% YouTube. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. That would be a scam if it arguably already is. They're taking 30%. But I could put all those super chats together and that's one coffee in the Joe Biden's economy. Yeah, or you could uh, you could put it into a stock market put and then um, make, a, make a tremendous amount of money. Or not. I could put it into, what was it, SPX puts, whatever the fuck that S is. S SPX puts. <laughs> what puts, as I think. He's betting on a new putting green opening up near him. All right. A fucking Gilded Destiny. Okay, let's move on to Gilded Destiny. Thanks, guys, for the super chats. Um, Thanks. I've got this on the company here. This isn't even the game. Gilded Destiny. There you go. Aquilia. What is Gilded Destiny? Aquila. I think it's how they say Aquila. Aquila? Or Aquila. Um, Gilded Destiny is a grand strategy game depicting the transformative transformative era of the. We're not going to do a Pachaka over, voiceover, I guess. I guess you want me to do one. It sounds like you want me to do one. No, wait, wait. Quake, thank you very much for the two pounds, Quake Riley. Uh, a single Fredo. Fredos used to cost like twenty p, uh, twenty p or something, twenty five p. Now they're probably two pounds. Okay, do you want to do an epic voiceover? Right, let me get you okay, some epic okay. music. Yeah, we need some want. triumphant music this time. Yeah. Okay, let's try and find something. Uh, Kevin McLeod, my boy. Yeah, give us uh, Ride of the Valkyries. That'll be uh, public domain, surely. It is. It's on the YouTube um, audio library, thankfully. Right, let's get it. On short bread. Oh, I'm, are we ready? Go ahead. Okay. Guild of Destiny is a grand strategy game depicting the transformative era of the Industrial Revolution. You will take the helm of the country of your choice and transform it from a backward agrarian society to an industrial powerhouse. The game is a deep simulation of societal transformation, industrialization, the economy, warfare, and diplomacy. 
The game is currently under development. Wishlist Guild of Destiny on Steam to follow and contribute our development. And contribute to our development on Steam? And contribute our development on Steam. Wishlist on Steam. Wait, it does. It is actually. Uh, that wasn't you messing up. That was actually. There's an error. Yeah. Contribute our development on Steam. That literally means that you can go on Steam and you your contribution to Steam would be <laughs> the development of Guild of Destiny. That's what that would mean. Oh, you look what you've done, Pie Chucky. You've got us playing Wagner. Uh, anyway, so this is another grand strategy project, indie small developer, coming in with a Victorian era grand strategy game. Um, that's just in direct co comparison to great. Are you still here, Pacha? I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I'm that's fine. Anywhere. That's fine. No, no, just making sure. Making Got you sure. you racked up from my voiceover. I had to still walk around the room. Yeah. Making sure Wagner didn't get you. <laughs> so. This doesn't have any money problems, apparently. But I I'm actually I actually don't know where their money comes from. I don't know. Cause um let's have a quick look, right? That's uh Um what's on Steam. They are developed by Aquila and published by Aquila. Then you go to Aquila, it's just, you know, some information. I'm actually curious. Where does their money come from? I've heard people say on the Discord they have a wealthy publisher or something or a wealthy parent company but i can't find any info it's not like i'm digging to try and find some shit behind them or anything i'm just genuinely curious um but it seems like money is no issue with them and they're not asking for donations anywhere by the way they're just there they're just developing their game they're publicizing it they have a discord they're not asking for money so that's in direct contrast to gilded eminence or whatever the fuck it's called <laughs> um thank you mo two again thank you i appreciate the two euros i'll get something with that probably not haggis uh, do you want a refund <laughs> no, I'm <joking. laughs> no refunds here i'm i'm turning into gray eminence i'm gonna take your two euros and gamble it on spx putt sorry no refunds <laughs> <laughs> on the same, actually, on a fateful day in 2020, the owner of uh, Aquila Interactive bet on SPX, but they, what, what's it called? What's the opposite of a putt? That's a. <laughs> a drive? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, no, no, what is it? A call? Or something like that? Oh. I don't know. The, I don't know the financial terms. I'm talking golf here, mate. Yeah. You are Scottish. So, I'm not sure that most <laughs> no, golf courses. The real, the real lore. The developer of Aquila Interactive mysteriously won 700k <laughs> on a, an SPX <laughs> He won it from Jordan. <laughs> he won it from the Grey Eminence guy. And they're using that 700k to fund great, a Gilded at Destiny with no donations required. Uh, Drop it on black for all I care. It's going to be red. Um, that's shocking. I don't gamble. Well, that's one thing I don't do. So don't worry. I don't gamble. Thank you for the $2. I, I don't go down to my local bookies to take my Patreon money and put it on a horse. Horse react this man. So, we need to give information about what this game fucking is now. Forget the money. They've, apparently yeah. money's no object for these people, so that's good. They're not going to run into the same problem as Grey Eminence, as far as we know. No. Seems that they have a, a, a Gilded Destiny pad. Oh. No? Whereas no. the other one had a Grey Eminence. Yeah, <laughs> great destiny. Yeah. Um, so that's so that's fucking stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they go. You go onto the page of Aquila Interactive and go games, and it's like it's set up to have multiple games, but they've only got one game. So you you can filter. <laughs> You can filter those genres of... I find this funny. I'm sorry to the... I like doing these little piss takes. If any of the devs of this are watching. It's not like I'm... I'm just having fun. Right. You can sort by their genre. So, oh. Let's see what strategy games this company has. Oh, a Gilded Destiny. Seems interesting. Have they got any other, any other genres? That's... No? All? Just the one? Uh, any horror games? Uh, nah, I'm joking. Right. So we go on that, like I said. It has its Steam page. Forge my own future. Of their new lives here. 
I mean, this trailer, we've got someone doing an Irish accent about emigrating. To be honest, I watched this trailer, I think it's on the Steam page, and I'm not, I wasn't that interested or blown away by this trailer. It was just some generic speech about emigrating to the new world, here's some revolution stuff. You could even call it Vic 3 esque, this stuff. My dreams are like their initial initial like aesthetic of what they're going for is very Vic 3 esque. Mm. And then they, they have uh, the hex map as well. Let's have a close look at this one. So what do you think of how this looks so far? I love it. I actually really, really like this because it, it, it suggests uh, practicality. You know, it suggests that what they're focused on is providing the best gameplay experience possible. Not some bullshit. A map looks pretty. The map looks good. And it looks kind of like uh, Hearts of Iron 3-ish with the colours. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'm, I love it. I love this. I'm very happy with this. I love hexes. I love Civ, Civ 5. I'm a big hex man. Yeah, I mean, I get your point. I do think the map... Look at the Netherlands. I mean, some of it... It looks so outlandishly unlike the real place, like the Netherlands there. Mm. But... It's not complete, I guess. We'll see. But that doesn't really matter so much as what I'm about to show you next. Let's just get straight into it. Gilded Destiny Warfare Vlog. Okay, this is where the fun begins. Let's have a live reaction. By the way, check out this project. Join Gilded Destiny's Discord. They're open to all sorts of feedback, suggestions, and they'll talk to you. Let's have a look. Are you ready? Okay, let's I'm ready. Go. On a high level, we want Warfare and Gilded Destiny to be something that AI can help you manage the majority of the time, but you'll still be free to intervene and issue commands directly to units if and when you see the opportunity to do so. Salutations, fellow industrialists. I'm Mark. I just want to stop there. All right. And uh, immediately, they start off the video very well by just clearly stating their overall goal for the war system. So... Instead of starting off with, hey guys, I'm Mark, they go on, they just, I like that. I really, really like that. In terms of just yeah. a pure video making format. It's not boring. Nine minutes. It's actually nine minutes of pure information. It's fantastic. What's what's everyone saying in the chat? Toy soldiers. People are saying, no, not again. When they have the start of that. Also, also there is uh, another thing that suggests uh, professionalness, which is subtitles. I really appreciate subtitles. Yeah. I help you manage the majority of the time but i'm just going to leave it on this but people i think people in the chat were worried that it's uh, an ai driven war system but the key point here is this one you'll still be free to intervene you'll still be free to intervene and issue commands directly to units if and when you see the opportunity to do so so, so what's the problem with that exactly that. yeah no i think they just heard the start of it they, yeah they rush they panic Without even getting into the video, that is what I said in the my video entitled The Victoria 3 War System. That's what I said mm. I wanted in that video. The compromise, the ability to automate or control your units if you want. And that's what they're going for. So don't take that negatively. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's carry on. Salutations, fellow industrialists. I'm Mark, one of the producers at Aquila Interactive working on Gilded Destiny. I'm originally from California, but currently based in the UK. In this dev diary for Gilded Destiny, I'm excited to announce that we'll cover one of the most anticipated game mechanics, Ground Warfare. Before we get into the topic though, I'd like to thank everyone for the amazing engagement and feedback on our last dev diary. Many of you have also joined our Discord community and raised some uh, challenges light mode. Uh, questions. I'm not on here, unfortunately, but I have been on the Discord. Sides. As we build the game, we will continue to optimize and fix the issues you have raised. <laughs> they comment on don't forget it. to yeah, leave us chat. comments and feedback. There's people I know on yeah, here. Comments. Valentin's here. Back after people are saying this is a red flag. If you have any further questions, don't be shy about hopping on our Discord and asking away. We'll be more than happy to answer. The link's in the description below. Now, on to the main topic for today. We know warfare is a controversial subject in the community ever since, well, ever since a particular game decided to remove the ability to directly have input on the outcome of battles. Well, so Based. he said that. Yeah. Yeah. He said that. He went there. Yeah. There's nothing 
more. Uh, what can I say? I'll just leave. I'll just leave the. Yeah. I'll leave that to sit with the chat for a Mark second. Mark from California, currently based in the UK. Very, very. Uh, I love that. I love a bit of edge. Uh, it shows that they're brave as well. Bold. <laughs> what? Oh, you mean in terms of no? He's uh, he's not. Uh, he didn't mean based in the UK as in he lives in the UK. He means like he's based know, and in the I UK. <laughs> I'm currently based in the UK. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the UK being based. It's playing to the crowd. And here, what's a, what's wrong with that if it's something we agree with, eh, right? It's, uh, anyway. But to put it plainly, that's not how we want to do it. <laughs> the 19th century witnessed incredible technological progress on the battlefield, as well as some of the most legendary military campaigns culminating in events such as German and Italian unification yep. and the reunification of the United States after the American Civil War. Yep. We believe a single progress bar per battlefront oh. simply won't oh. do the era justice. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that's got to hurt. Oh, he said it. He went deeper. He went further. Did you hear that one, Pichaka? I missed it. Tell me, tell me what I've missed. Yeah. Let's repeat it. <laughs> Let's just let him say it again. <laughs> The American Civil War. We believe a single progress bar per battlefront simply won't do the era justice. On a high level, we want. Damn! Oh. I did miss that. That is devastating. It's it's not real. When you just actually think about it, it's not devastating. That's just the most basic thing to say that you might want in a game in the nineteenth century. It's not crazy. This isn't like to to iterate again and again. This isn't a mad diehard hateful little Victoria 2 community going insane wanting some crazy feature that no one else wants. This is the most basic shit you can ever ask for in a game. And it's and yeah. it has to sound revolutionary because of what Victoria 3 did. It sounds crazy now <laughs> because of that fucking game, right? But, the Overton uh, window on Victoria 3 has made us, uh, yeah. has made us depressingly, uh, just, just, yeah, just saying something like that. Oh. I finally but, feel heard. Yeah. At least, I don't know if the guy reading this out, by the way, but someone or one of the main people on the Gilded Destiny team, which is a very small team, is um, a former Paradox employee, by the way. And this whole thing, none of this is bad. None of this is negative, hateful or toxic. They're not criticising Paradox massively. They're just giving a little nod to a game that they want to differentiate themselves from. It's nothing bad at all here. This is normal. This is a normal discourse, but things have been... Too crazy for the past few years. Anyway. Want Warfare and Gilded Destiny to be something that AI can help you manage the majority of the time, but you'll still be free to intervene and issue commands directly to units if and when you see the opportunity to do so. Now we get into some details. Oh, fuck! No! No! That's Each the combat in their game. It's, a, it's like a, a mobile game chopping heads off with knights. That's their combat. No. Oh, it's Raid Shadow Legends. Map is a division with a... No, I know about Adblock. The, the, the picture which, looks a bit like um, Stephen Fry from Blackadder. Yeah, I, I don't have an ad block on this because this is like I'm using a different browser to be logged out and be able to show this shit without... Uh, uh, never mind. The composition of each division will be a mixture of historically appropriate infantry, artillery, cavalry, Very fast. Et That's a very fast division. 9,999 meters a day. Although it's worth pointing Is out that, really that the fast? scale of the map in all probability, you'll mostly have small divisions spread throughout your empire. It's a kilometer a day. It's not very fast at all. Yeah, actually, that's very slow. They're useless. Those are shit units. Yeah. You'd be, that'd be a skill issue. Slow. I just want to point a out... A bunch of fat bastards. Said, uh, yeah. <laughs> he says here, this is actually a very key point that I really am interested in. He says, small divisions th spread throughout your empire. Um, so take the UK, for example. It's gonna That's more realistic for the UK because they didn't have a gigantic standing army sitting in India waiting to invade China like in Vic2. We love Vic2. But what it really was was a very small professional army spread out across the empire going on little interventions and wars and gunboat diplomacy and stuff so but at the same time on the european continent there will be large armies so i don't it should depend on the country i i don't know very interesting
throughout your empire, which is more historically accurate to the time period. If your country is at the forefront of industrialization and technological breakthroughs, your units will consist of increasingly deadly weapons of the era, from rifles to machine guns to ever longer range artillery. The combination of new technology and highly trained graduates from your state-of-the-art military academy will render your force invincible. There we go. For each division, you can assign an AI stance that will dictate how it behaves. For example, you can set the stance to garrison, where the division will defend if attacked, but not move from its assigned position to pursue the enemy. It's useful if you want a unit to defend a strategic point or if you want to take full manual control. Next up, you can set to general defense where the division will move and defend within the country automatically, although not over the ocean. It will actively engage the enemy when conditions are favorable. Alternatively, you can choose defend province where the division will move into position and defend the specified province automatically when an enemy enters and proactively engage the enemy when favorable. On the more aggressive side, even these AI controls, these are like the AI stances that automate your army. Even these are more in-depth than Victoria 3's automated things. So for all the people who like Victoria 3's vision and want an automated system, but don't like what Victoria 3 offers because it's just shit, uh, even the AI offering on Gilded Destiny apparently would offer Victoria people who like Victoria 3's vision something better, mm. which is why it's, a good point. Yeah, it's such... It's such a no-brainer to make the compromise like this, have AI control or manual control to give people the best of both worlds. And it's not impossible. It's clearly doable and they're going to probably do it. So people are arguing about the fucking, the maths behind how much that movement speed was in the chat. Come on. Uh, anyway, I'll continue. You can set your AI stance to general attack, where the division will move to attack hostiles if present, it looks like the unit's current stance is T-pose, though. Is that one of the settings there? <laughs> and reachable. And finally, for those warmongers, you have Attack Province, where the selected division will aim to attack and occupy an assigned province. The aim of these AI stances is to offer you a greater level of flexibility by allowing AI to lower your workload in the ways you might expect. However, as we highlighted earlier, you can always override AI at any point if you see any reason to do so. We believe this ability to intervene directly is something many of you have longed for as well. You will be able to take direct control of any and every unit, commanding them to face the enemy directly, where and how you choose, circumventing their main strength in order to target the weak units, protecting I love how they're the flanks, not, or it's getting good. behind and Yeah, this is a medieval combat. So the whole thing is obviously they're very early and they're just putting in placeholder um, sprites or models. Well, yeah, Lord Lambert. Lord Lambert said the warfare looks garbage because he didn't he didn't listen. He yeah, didn't listen. For God's sakes, Lord Lambert. He would, let them cook. Yeah, let them cook. Or, I mean, even at the start when they said the basic over, overview of what it was, saying you can AI control or override, they did say that. I went to the fucking shop. I just came back. No worries. Um, what was I going to say? Ah, yes. I, I don't know how we feel about how the map looks. I mean, this doesn't look like the United Kingdom. This is kind of strange. It's got like, I don't know how incomplete it is or how much they'll finish it, but it's looking like desert tiles and shit. What's, what's going on here? It looks... Uh... I, think, I think it's very early, which I think th th it does look shit, and they're not going to be blind to that. Like, uh, there was a spelling weird font error on Russian Empire as well. The P's like misshapen but um the fact that they're showing us is good it's nice good good and shit at the uh, beginning because you know like uh gilded destiny showing us you know all this fancy shit and how many provinces doesn't really you mean gray eminence gray eminence oh you're right actually it wasn't a problem for me before but now it is <laughs> oh gray eminence yeah okay I don't know yeah. how Grey Eminence's war system was going to be, by the way. I don't. They might have a dev diary on it. I've kind of forgotten what they were planning. If I recall correctly, they were... Actually, I don't recall anything. I don't know what Grey Eminence's war was going to be like. Is anyone in the chat? Room? But, um, yeah, you watching this, you can get a feel for the scale of things. You can see how big a hex is. Wait, let me just... Yeah, 
So if you hover your mouse, he's hovering his mouse over a hex here. That's one of the hexes. That's your province. Um, you get a, an idea of the scale. So you can move your stacks around from hex to hex at a certain speed. If you set them to the AI stances, they will automatically move defensively or offensively based on what you choose. Or you can just click on them and right click and move them. And that will make front, front lines um nice like shape for Vic 2. It will simplify a lot of that because there's a, quite often a Vic 2, in my brief experience, uh, you know, provinces connecting in certain strange ways can really fuck you. So seeing the hexes being nice and so we can see the front line and, and shape is still a factor with the hexes. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know what, I don't think we can get an idea of what that will look like yet. No. Especially in terms of like occupying country, occupying land in wars and stuff. I don't know how that's going to work. We don't have that yet. But uh, the way they're going with this, I think it's going to be more based on early game Victoria 2 warfare. I don't think they're going for front lines World War One style. These are like army corps, Napoleonic mm. style is what they're going for. I don't think we're going to see front lines in this game. Um, I can't remember the end date of their, pl their plan. It starts in 1822, which is a little bit earlier than Vic 2. I don't know. We're, we're going to just keep watching. Let them cook through the whole video and then we'll get a better idea. I've longed for it as well. You will be able to take direct control of any and every unit, commanding them to face the enemy directly, where and how you choose, circumventing their main strength in order to target the weak units, protecting their flank, or getting behind and cutting off their supplies. When you're victorious and the enemy is on the run, you'll be in charge of what to do next. Will you pursue the enemy and ensure their retreat, allow mercy and let them escape, or fully encircle and eliminate them. Encircle, he said it. Encircling and eliminating your enemy in its entirety in one go will likely be a very difficult thing to achieve. For most of the era covered in Gilded Destiny, military formations were relatively small and covered vast areas. Effective encirclement will require careful planning. He said most of the time frame, so maybe Different towards the end. Different terrains will have a drastic impact on the movement of your military as well as combat effectiveness. For example, rivers Encirclement is confirmed, but can you encircle navies? Mm. Swamps and forests will all reduce your speed, but also provide you with a defensive bonus. As you industrialize and build a rail network across your country, you... Actually, sorry to pause that again. Um, if you don't want it to be paused, I've linked the video in the description. Um, it's actually... I think they have... It's funny how they have the balls to just make a video where they have literal fucking knights T-posing as their army stacks. They don't care. <laughs> That's like, what this is what we've the got. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, we don't care that this is what we've got. We're going to show it. We don't yeah. care if what you think of our fucking knights tea posing. If they, if it they really matter have... when you're when, when you're not taking Patreon donations, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they're they're getting funded by some frivolous billionaire or something. I don't know. But maybe if they have real balls, they'll put these knights with tea poses in the final game. <laughs> You will also gain the invaluable ability to quickly move troops from one corner of your country to the next through a mechanism called uh, strategic redeployment, redeployment when in Hearts of Iron. Troops will seek the nearest force train station in EU four, three, the next train rail and march. deploy to the closest station near the destination. Something that isn't in Vic 2 and that would actually be very useful in Vic 2 to be honest. However, keep in mind that redeployed troops will need time to reorganize before becoming combat effective again. Keeping your troops well supplied and fed is a crucial aspect in winning any war. By the way, remember, everyone justifying the Victoria 3 war system was like, it's going to be more about logistics and planning, and it looks like this game will have that too anyway. When deployed domestically, supplies will be provided by the province where the troops are currently located. When invading others, supplies will be sourced from your nearest reachable province. If your army lacks supplies, either because you lack the resources or your army is completely cut off, that is with no access to logistical support, their combat effectiveness will drop. Soldiers will face abnormally high attrition and in some cases, even outright mutiny may occur. Is that a Wagner reference? Sorry. One more detail we've been mulling over is how we can- uh, This is, this is uh, my favorite part. On the population that persists far beyond the combat phase. While other games model out a decrease in population due to war attrition, 
little attention is paid to a much larger group, wounded veterans. Conceptually, we want to create a job type called wounded veterans. It's a job type that can't work, requires state or military pensions, and cannot change jobs. There'll be a burden on the state budget for a long time to come. Each time you engage in combat, a portion of your soldiers will die, and a portion will become wounded veterans. Their numbers will slowly dwindle during periods of peace when new soldiers are not being wounded and existing wounded veterans pass away naturally. As a group, they will also have inclinations towards some pop qualities, such as support for better medical care and more militaristic policies. The goal here is to simulate the full gravity of starting a war and how its consequences can be felt for decades to come. We're still balancing how to implement this concept, whether as individual POPs across the country or as a combined population group within the military panel. This consideration is partially about performance constraints as well, related to an increased amount of individual POPs, so we'll have more to tell in the future. What do you think about having a wounded veteran system? Let us know. Well, what do we think about having a wounded veteran system? And we're saying it on here instead of on the Discord, but we'll say it anyway. What do you think? So, actually, I think it's a fantastic idea. Like, uh, but just quickly, somebody made a uh, reference. The Bluke. Uh, wounded veterans would stop warmongers. Yes, mongers, sorry. They said that it would that have more militaristic policies, but traditionally, veterans are very, uh, not, not much the uh, jingoists. <laughs> it depends, yeah. actually. Um, wounded veterans probably wouldn't want more war, but... Remember, after World War One, all the soldiers coming home, especially those German ones forming the Freikorps and shit, they were kind of militaristic, depending. Yeah. I guess it's more situational if they felt like uh, the war ended well, too for soon. Versailles, yeah, Versailles and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's a int very, very interesting concept historically and uh, stuff. And uh, wounded veteran pops that you have to care for which will make you consider going to war because it's going to be a strain on you. It's good. I like also, it. Also, we'll punish uh, map painting as well, which is finding natural ways of restricting map painting is fantastic because it's very artificial the way that in all Paradox games that they restrict you from full-blown map painting. It's very artificial and it feels like almost like an invisible wall or something like that instead of something that's an actual mechanic that's suggesting that you don't do that. Yeah, and again, these are the people defending Victoria 3 saying, it's not a map painter, it's not a map painter. How does Victoria 3 limit you from map painting? Uh, the war's shit, so you don't want to fight them? Or, there really isn't much. That was too easy, that was too easy. <laughs> the fact that, kind of, it hurts your economy to be at war, maybe. Anyway, shall we get their final thoughts? Yeah. How many soldiers you can muster in a war not only depends on your population, but also on the draft policy you have. We will cover this topic more in a future dev diary on internal politics and policies. Finally, your military can only invade another country once a state of war exists between you. When you declare war, your justification will be crucial. A solid justification can win the approval and potentially support of other nations, while a bad one can lead to suspicion, hostility, and embargo against you. More on this in a future dev diary on diplomacy. Alright, this is getting too long. This is it for this episode of Gilded Destiny Dev Diaries. Thank you for watching, and please stay tuned for a future dev diary on warfare, where we'll discuss actual unit stats, measuring combat progress, and more. If you have any feedback or questions, we encourage you to comment below or join our Discord community. Any feedback is a great resource for us through our development, and we do carefully go through all of it. Lastly, we beseech thee to graciously subscribe to our esteemed YouTube channel, and, shouldst thou not have done so already, to add Gilded Destiny to the hallowed depths of thy Steam wishlist. Until our paths converge once more... Look at them asking for all that money on their Patreon. Damn. Mm. We bid thee farewell. Well, that's very interesting. This is a pretty hopeful game. It looks good. It is. I don't, I'm not yeah. saying it's going to be... I don't know if it's going to be amazing, the be-all and end-all, but it's something very positive. Uh, everything I've seen... I mean, 
I don't particularly. Oh, so feels... No, go on. Sorry, go ahead. I was say, no, this you... feels pretty good for a uh, Dev Diary Six as well. It's very early days. They're talking about the warfare concepts for the very first time, so you do have to keep in mind that it's very, very early on. Yeah. Um. What was I going to say? Oh yeah. So I don't really care about the the hex system. I would, if I was going to ask or ask for or make a new grand strategy game, I wouldn't have asked for a hex system. I wouldn't have asked for a globe. I don't really care. It's nice. It's fine. But I never would have asked for it. But it's fine and it's very interesting and it's different. I guess it makes the game unique and different. Uh, the hex mm. system isn't unique because there's also this other game called Grey Eminence that has it. But the globe hasn't been done. Well, it's been done in some other thing we won't talk about. But uh, in a real big game, new game, it's interesting. We'll see it. But there is one kind of elephant in the room that has been leveled as a, a critique of Gilded Destiny based on other videos. And you might have noticed a bit of it there. What do you think it is, Pachucker? Um, not sure. No. Performance. Performance. And lag. Ah. If you look at the videos of Gilded Destiny, you can see that the game actually lags even in their own videos for it. And it's quite there's quite bad frame rate issues. And that's, that's a paper, it's yeah. a concern. And I've I've actually I actually raised it to them. But because the game's early and it isn't out yet, you can't guarantee and it's not like a conclusion. It's just what it looks like so far. It could point towards a big future concern, or it could be something they'll easily fix. We don't know that yet. I don't know fuck all about game development, but it does seem like generally people leave optimizing to be one of the few things it's part of the polish yes so, yeah correct that is something that i've learned from overseeing open vic um it, prematurely concerned prematurely being concerned about optimization and performance from the game developers on open vic who have experience is seen as not something that's that important and they see it as something not to worry about, get the game working the way you want it, get that right, think about performance later. That seems to be the approach that I've seen from real game developers. So mm. I'm not. that's why I'm not going to, from my own experience, go too harsh on the performance thing. But it is a valid thing that people will notice by watching their own videos. And a lot of people have raised it. So it's important to mention. Have you read anything about their timeline? Have they got any sort of idea of when they're going to be completing different sections? I haven't actually. That's something I haven't seen. Let's just look at their Steam page. So I'd be I'd be reassured by a, a solid a solid timeline like a uh, two years or something like that. It says twenty twenty four. Yeah, that's that's quite soon, and it seems like they do. It, it seems like they they probably admit they've got a long way to go. But I don't know how quickly they're making progress. Yeah, it's, it's actually a, a relatively soon thing. It could be late 2024, which still gives it actually a very long time. It gives it the rest of this year and another year on top of that. They could release it in December. But what are people... The, um, Luddites were they took our jobs type of people, protesting the loss of work in their way of life, in a lot of cases being replaced by factories. I guess so. Imagine if you were a millionaire and had effectively endless money to make your own game any genre. The trials we suffered at home have hardened my result. Somebody I guess... mentioned earlier, uh, by the way, which I wanted to bring up just quickly. Somebody said that uh, wounded veterans wouldn't discourage map painting. It would encourage it because you'd want to get more pops. Which, I don't think, you know... Most games in Grand Strategy, you can't just use, utilize, you know, draft the pops that you conquer immediately. You know, if you think about Victoria 2, except the pops are the only ones that you can uh, mobilize. Yes, hmm. The Wounded Veterans would discourage map painting in the sense that going to war too much would cripple your country. Yeah. Economically. Poor use of, uh, poor, and... poor choice of words, but. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but that is the main word that people use for that yeah it would uh, create too many dependent pops mm. this is what I, I remember we actually talked a lot about this in the development of Victoria 3 mm. 
but I don't know how Victoria 3 has done that, if they've done it at all. It's not something I've heard them really talk about. Do they have wounded veterans in Victoria 3? I haven't noticed it myself. Anyone in the chat know? Yeah, they do. They have something. They do. Also, you get the wounded vets of another country. That's a very good point. I can consider that. Very good point. Yeah, TC well... Masters 1, 2, 3. We can annex a bit of land and send all the enemy wounded veterans that lived in that bit of land back into the enemy country. You know that, oh my god, you know that Byzantine tactic they did against the Bulgarians? Do you know what I'm no. talking about? No, well, no. at one point, they defeated the Bulgarians in a battle, took all the Bulgarian prisoners, and they cut out the eyes of 9 out of 10 people and let the one person with eyes oh, lead them I back have, home. I have heard of this. Now, that's a bit of an extreme example when we're talking about this, but that's what we're—that's the sort of thing, that's the sort of idea here. I always, well, I always wonder about those. It's, it's very much an ancient history type thing when they talk about that stuff. They come up with these ridiculous that's Byzantines. Ideas. It wasn't that long ago, Byzantines, just talking medieval. Yeah. Now, what, I, what I'm saying is, well, I mean, Byzantines are around a long time, but, um, like, <laughs> whose who's idea was that? What, what bloke was in charge of, hey, guys, before we send the Bulgarians away, how about this? You know, it's just like I don't know. You know, I can't. I don't know who did that. It wasn't very nice of him. It's like Vlad the Impaler because you know you don't have the internet to radicalize you. You have to self-radicalize. Yeah, <laughs> come up with these fucking insane ideas. Yeah, maybe it's like ten years of fighting the Bulgarians. You'll want to do anything to them. Basil, the Bulgar Slayer. It's funny we should mention that when Grey Eminence was being made in Bulgaria. Mm. And uh, 9 out of 10 of uh, the dev team had their eyes. Um, uh. <laughs> <know>. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we, need a, we need more Patreon donations to pay for eye surgery for 9 people. <laughs> ah, some of our jokes are too much, eh? This is why people out there don't like us. This no. <laughs> 100, 153 people. That's uh, that's a that's a that's a crowded hall. That's a, you could fit quite a few. That's uh, that's quite a few people. Although it's bold to assume that 153 people that are watching all like us. Mm. Remember when Basil said, "Keep your eyes peeled." <laughs> uh, I don't know if the Grey Eminence developers or the Gilded Destiny developers would want to associate too much with me after this one. And we've just praised their game and then we start talking about this. But check out Gilded Destiny, join their Discord. If there's things that you didn't like in what we just looked at in Gilded Destiny, then you can just go and give them feedback. They're open to it, very open to it. Their lead if you developer, really like the look, if you really like the look of the game, you can go to the Aquila interactive website and apply for a job and get on the supply side of things involved are they are they recruiting yeah, there's anyone there's, there's a careers tab are you pat do you want let's uh oh let's get a corporate sort of recruitment music and you can read this out in your epic voice what kind of song should we get for this uh the very corporate um elevator music no uh, no 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 it'd be like youtube YouTube tutorial music. Look that up. Okay. YouTube tutorial music. Surely that's up. I feel like it would be better in your voice if you do like your um, your Lemmy, <laughs> your Lemmy type thing where you go like uh. You sounded different. You know what I mean? Huh? Your microphone suddenly sounded very different. I thought a fucking other person had just walked in. No, no, I must have smashed it or something. Okay. Well, you sound different. <laughs> What kind of I, voice I still sound different. What would my voice be for that? It'd be like, "Are you passionate?" No. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. That's it. Like a uh, Lemmy for his um, fucking phone call fantasy thing. Phone call. You know, kill Jester. <laughs> oh no, no, yeah. no. Um, let me get some. My YouTube. name's my name's Falconhof. I'm not doing. Dreamscape came up. That fucking Dreamscape 009 sound system song came up. Overused music? Some of this will be copyrighted. It has to be Kevin McClure. Okay, forget this. Forget this. We're losing the viewers here. And there's still other topics to get onto. Um, 
By the way, give the stream a like. Hopefully we'll get more people in here. And drop a super chat. Do you have any questions about anything you've seen so far? Yeah. Drop a super chat. Um, these are very corporate things on here, though. Very corporate for a four-man team. I say, Matt, sorry if it's uh, not men. Um, yeah, very good. Are you not reading it? You decide not to. I've decided not to. Do you still want to look? People on the people in the chat have already read this themselves. They don't need this read out. Yeah, yet. they don't oh. need us to read it again. Job openings. Oh, I don't have a LinkedIn account myself. Uh... Oh, similar pages. Riot Games. Interesting. You don't want to work there. By the way, there. This is a, a Hong Kong based company, but they're completely remote working. So, like you said, the guy is based in the UK. Someone else might be based in Hong Kong. Someone else might be based in America. Yeah. Company size 11 to 50 employees. I thought they only had four people. Am I right or wrong about that? This was uh, a big range, 11 to 50. They literally have their office in the Kowloon Walled City as well. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Imagine. They've got a Kenneth May and Mark Stryker. Oh, there's Mark. There's Mark uh, based in the UK right there. That's based Fantastic. in the UK from California. There's our guy. Yeah. That's our man right there. We didn't necessarily want to be reading out real names there, but these are, I guess this is public, so it's fine. Um, what else have we got? There's nothing it's else. Not, it's not like we're on their Facebook. It's just LinkedIn. Don't worry about it. It's, it's LinkedIn, yeah. And they're looking <laughs> for jobs. If you've got any skills, go and work with them, I guess. <laughs> LinkedIn will include receptionist, etc. It's said on the Steam forum they're working on more than just Gilded Destiny. They don't have anything else yet on there. They've only got one game and one genre so far. But maybe they have a very bright future ahead of them. Maybe. Mm. If they have I'll try I'll no try and leverage problems. I'll try and leverage the stream into a LinkedIn application to be the narrator for their videos. For their dev diaries. Yeah. You know, this is Pie Jucker, and welcome back. <laughs> To great or oh, gilded destiny <laughs> you can't do it you already fucked it up you can't do no, it no, i did that on purpose i did that on purpose. <laughs> maybe this company gilded destiny company should take over gray eminence and be the publisher that they need and they would mm. be releasing two similar grand strategy games one after the <laughs> other with hexes or they could merge the games i don't think they're merging uh, merging games isn't fucking possible by the way that's sick i don't see that happening um, there's still plenty of other stuff to talk about, but yeah, I just wanted to, no, I seriously, I genuinely really wanted to highlight this because whether or not this is going to be the thing that's going to be a great new game that we all play, that's going to be the answer to Vic 3, I still, I still feel it deserves a lot more uh, attention. Go to their Discord, follow them on Twitter, do all this because they deserve it. They've, they're doing good stuff. And what they've announced in their war system is in direct response to Victoria 3. And it is what I argued for in my Victoria 3 war system video. So how can I not give them massive shoutouts for this? This is what we want. So go and check them out, everyone. 100%. Yeah, no, they seem to be very professional and they seem to be uh, moving along in a very nice direction. So 100%. Yeah, and I'm going to be paying attention to the development. I'll see how it's going. I'll give updates and uh, retweet them and all that and massive shout outs looks to three uh, 33,600 subs true but 33,600 players would be enough uh, mm. on release day to make them a lot of money like, I don't know yeah who knows that but it doesn't my own subscriber count doesn't really matter it's whether or not it's the right or wrong it's the thought that counts I want to shout them out because they're doing they're making a game I want and but my victoria 3 war system video does have 120,000 views at a 90 percent like ratio so they're not just thinking of my subscriber count they're probably thinking of that video and going there's actually a big audience for this compromise and since the war is automated they'll even get victoria 3 fans in here because the compromise is so obvious they will get people who like victoria 3 and victoria 2 because they're compromising between Army micromanagement and automation. It's so obvious to do that, right? Anyway. Yeah. Because it's just such a basic good business choice to do that. 
yeah. it's right there. Also saying shit like, um, you know, ask us questions and give us. Well, you didn't show the comments of the video, but they did uh, say a few things. A few people added a couple of little bit of suggestions. Fuck, I'm getting. You can tell it's two o'clock in the morning. Tripping over my words. We need to chug through. We need to get through onto uh, yeah, no. City Skylines too. I'm not as well. tired. I just start talking like a daft prick after a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, there's a couple. There's a couple of nice comments. One person said promising. Uh, can't wait to see more of this game. But there was one. Uh, yeah, one person did say promising there. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody did say something. I'm sure. I think. Uh, is it up here? Someone said, not the Discord light mode, two crying emojis. But other than that, great job, it's looking amazing. Fair point. I saw a mechanic, might, might be further up. And if you look at the actual game, it's, it's really bright as well. Like the developers of this are sitting there in Discord light mode and they're making their game really bright. Tone it down a bit, lads. I love that you can see space in the background. It's not like black. It's just like there's actual star systems. <laughs> Stellaris. There's going, there's going to be yeah, there's going to be expansion. That's the Stellaris. I, yeah, so I mean, I just noticed that. that. I didn't. I never thought about when you go to the globe, you see space in the background. I never thought of that, but that's actually weird and crazy. This is the 19th century, and we're in space. It's a bit. That's. I'm not. I don't care about the globe that much. I mean, people really go, "Oh my god, a globe!" and they saw a face at it. But it's fine. Go Soy for it, face in a good way or in a bad way? In a good way, because they really want a game with a globe. Sure. If that's yeah. what you want. It's not, it's, not very, it's not very realistic, though, is it? No, it's not important. <laughs> you can have a game on a globe, but if it's shit, the globe doesn't really matter, does it? It's that dog whistling. It's not, it's not realistic, anyway. And but, it would uh... make sense in a space game as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Was it, uh, what's our next? What's next Let's move on. Agenda? We actually do have the Armchair Historians fucking project, which is also a massive thing going on here. Uh, let's close these. Um, I don't want to, let's not spend too long on this. I just want to mention this is happening and this is um, very interesting. So, and plus, he's on, there isn't any actual big formal advertised media about this yet. And it's really still just in a planning and concept phase. But they do seem to be really moving ahead with it and they're tr starting to come up with names for the game. So, what is this? This is, like like I said, the Armchair Historian, who is a ginormous YouTuber at, what, 2 million subscribers who does history videos that are fantastic. Yeah. Great animations, great art in them, great topics, wide variety of topics looking at different perspectives. Like, something he does is he'll look at World War II from the perspective of X country and really give you their uh, point of view. I like that. I like his channel. Mm. Hasn't done the history of armchairs though. But uh, his videos, no, they're oh. fantastic. Great graphics and things. And yeah, he does do some... I, I, I like those videos that you are mentioning, the uh, perspectives. They're good. Yes. Good. But something he, something he also does, he got into game development. And he founded Armchair History Interactive and they made a game called Fire and Maneuver. A couple of years ago, it I don't remember when it came out. They've been working on it for like two or three years, and it came out somewhat recently. And it's a pretty decent game. It's a war game, uh, a, a tactical war game with a little basic campaign map moving around. And the, the concept for the game is actually really interesting. I haven't ever gotten around to playing it, but I like it. So, and that was their first game. So we're talking about a company who has actually made a game. They've got a track record, and it's a pretty good game. It works. A very good concept. They might not. It might not have been massive. They might not have made huge money off it. But they, this is unlike the past two things I've shown you. Armchair history here has a track record of a game and a clear source of money to go into developing a new game because he's a fucking two million subscriber channel making who knows God knows how much that he can invest if he so chooses. Anyway. What are they planning to do? They're planning to make a Victorian era and beyond strategy game that is actually geared towards war and geared towards building up to World War One and fighting World War I. Um, you can actually read this and I think they're calling it Imperial Dawn. Is that a name? I think he's finalised the name already. What, what do you think so far, Patrick? Go on, tell us. Well, I haven't seen I haven't read much of this, so this is all very new to me as well. Tentatively titled Imperial Dawn. 
Uh, right, so yes. This is interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah, you're. I think you're in the uh, in the front seat for information on this game. I have not seen much of this. Yeah, because it is still very small, and th this is a armchair historian's other channel about his game company, which only I. <laughs> I'm doing, I've got a bigger channel than the armchair historian here myself. <clears throat> He's only got 25k subs, I've got 33k. Yeah. So I'm, I'm giving a shout out to a small channel here, helping them yeah. out, giving them a leg up, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, this, it's, it's low key for now because they don't have much yet. They're just planning stuff. But I thought, I wanted to talk about it because it's really, really interesting what they're doing uh, or what they're planning to do. And you can read their little description here. They're going from 1861 to 1921. And it's no coincidence, that's actually the 1861 start date from Victoria too. Or, in other words, the American Civil War. So this is geared around wars. They want it to be about the American Civil War. They want it to be about uh, the Franco-Prussian War and all this. And then, ultimately, World War One. And... Let's just talk about what they plan for their war system. Um, they've got lots of concept art. He's looking at you. I mean, voted two times this is him to the one where the army is represented or the units are represented by tiny little sprites. And of course, this looks a lot more realistic to be pop up windows within within the campaign. So you could be looking at the bubbles or Let's bars or all of these things. I think this is him really describing show, what it's going to uh, be. What this unit is. All right. The next concept we have, and this is how it looks, by the way as a pop-up window. So the other thing I'll, I'll clarify for all of you guys, these are these would be pop-up windows within within the campaign. So you could be looking at this grand strategy map. I know someone asked, they asked if there were going to be tiles in this system. There will be like, there will be tiles and states. You'll have like several little tiles that comprise a larger state, uh, similar to a game like Hearts of Iron, I suppose. And when a battle is initiated, you're going to see this pop-up and the player is going to be able to interact with it. Okay, that's the idea there. That's the overall overall idea for his uh, the war system. What do you think? What if you have a, what if you have uh, ten battles going at once? Yes. Um, so what their their plan for that is, you would be able. So those battles would be automated, but you can go in and out of individual battles to direct them a little bit, give them a, oh, a tactic here and there. Mm. So if there's only one battle going on, you can heavily manage it. So. In these in the game EU4 or Victoria 2, when you click on a battle, you can see what's going on, you can see the role and stuff. This, what he's planning, is to essentially have that, but you can have input on the battle in that pop-up window. If you so choose. If not, it will be automated. A bit like the compromise cool. in Guild of yeah. Destiny that I've talked about. A bit like yeah. a bit like there's a massive audience for what I said in the Victoria 3 War System video. And people mm. You know, my crazy die-hard Vic 2 ideas in the fringe of the world, no one listens, are being developed into uh, two fantastic looking games, at yeah, least. Your crack, your crackpot theory. I'm the crackpot with my theory. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually really funny how that works. Initially, one proud Bavarian's idea was the crackpot theory. Then it became the real thing in Victoria 3 and they, they made me the crackpot. It's actually really funny how that works. Yeah. But... Because the ideas of the ideas that I'm promoting are so obvious, and I'm not saying these people are copying my ideas or anything. I, that's not what I'm saying. Um, they're not. But my ideas are so obvious that there's clearly a market for them, and other people are doing them, and they're going to be making good games out of them. And they could be the competitor to Paradox. They could be what we play instead of Victoria Three. Could be. And these are real. Co this is separate from Open Vic, by the way. These are these are real commercial projects. I'm rambling on, but this is a really interesting project from the Armchair Historian, who's a fantastic YouTuber. And since yes. it's really early, we could just leave it there. Yeah. Any more thoughts on that, Pie Chucker? No, I like the sound of this. This is interesting. Uh, I will need to do some more reading on it uh, on my own. But just seeing this little thing has given me uh, the motivation to go do that because this is this is interesting. I like the idea. You you had, you described the uh, concept very well. The um, battle being automated but you can jump in there and have a fuck about and see if you can affect it a little bit and fix it um it's good it's good it's interesting yeah i think from what they're planning there will actually be quite extensive things you can do to inf influence a battle you can like drop a gas attack on them in world war one in a battle by going in there or you can set your people to flank different things here very it's a very interesting concept it's like 
paradox game but with more expanded battle influence and stuff and it's i like how yeah. i like the art style as well because um when you get when you get a bit when you're trying too hard for realism quite often you sacrifice um actual gameplay and that looks very clean you can see exactly what's going on oh well, these are yeah. I, I can't stress this enough how early this is though these are just mm. concept arts that are there to lay out the, what they plan rather than how it'll look yeah. so i don't know if it will go for this ultimately and they might do more three they might make this say 3d instead of the 2d it currently is i don't know yeah but what else yeah other than just the war stuff they do plan to have a wider whole grand strategy thing where you have diplo you have an economy i don't know exactly what depth they're going to make those things in a game that is actually focusing on war so Anything well stylized looks better than the realism attempt. That's actually well a good point, J Master. And we know that Armchair Historian has a clear style from his videos and the art and stuff he uses. That could just put that in the game and it would be very stylized. Yeah. And they've kind of done that with uh, what do you call it? Fire and maneuver. Is this the map here? It's just another concept art, yeah. It looks good. I like that. Yeah, it's got a style. It's got their cartoon style. I don't know if that's what it'll look like, but even that looks good. It looks better than what Guild of Destiny's map looks like so far on the ground, in terms of the terrain and England being desert. Yes, it does look a lot better. <laughs> I'm only joking, though. Yeah. What are we talking about next, Pachucker? What What have we got? City Skylines 2. This is not a grand strategy game. No. It's a different game. But it is... Uh, would you no? You probably call it a simulation, a city builder game. Yeah. Would you call it a strategy? Maybe. Hmm. Probably. City not. build. It's city builder. Simulate. They're all here. Simulation yeah. city builder. CS2 still has better warfare than Vicky 3. Well said, Lord Lambert. Yeah. So, how excited are you for this game on a scale from one to ten? I never get excited about things, Pychaka. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that this game looks promising. I'm not excited about it per se. Maybe a little bit. If I were to say how excited I am, I would say three, but that's just me, not the game. I don't get excited yeah. for the games, especially not after Vic 3. I'm actually a bit worried. You said that you don't get excited at all. Are you just talking about games? Yeah, okay, sure. No, I do get excited for <laughs> No, I think I think uh, I didn't play a lot of City Skylines One. I played probably a couple hundred hours of it. But it was a very good game. It was a very good game. Uh, SimCity Five was a worse game, but I liked it more. Uh, but City Skylines Two looks like it's just going to be across the board improvement. And um, yeah, like uh, it looks very very good. It looks like it's just a straight up upgrade, and um, that's what people want in a sequel. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, City Skylines Two looks like. From what we can see and hear about it so far, looks like a genuinely really good upgrade on the predecessor, and it looks very promising. Now, when the game was first announced, we were all memeing and joking about it, because we actually saw it being announced live, remember? A few months yes, ago. I do remember. And then I made was, a video. Was not a, it was not a great announcement. The whole party wasn't. I guess that even mm. the, the trailer was meh. I don't, I don't care for trailers really anyway, but then I made a video just making fun of their trailer and I put the, I put footage of the line from Saudi Arabia over the voiceover of the City Skylines 2 trailer. I remember. But it's fantastic. That's a little bit of a niche one there. No one, not too many people watch that, but I think it's still funny. Anyway, now that we've actually gotten more information and we know what they're planning with this game, for example, in this advert laid in the Games Radar article, everything we know so far, it looks like such a good, genuine, big improvement. For example, I read uh, this on my phone, by the way, and it was a nightmare. But yeah, it looks much better on desktop. But yeah, <laughs> that's saying something. Oh, I actually suffer from tinnitus. I, I could do with this ear ringing stopping. Anyway, um, any info, 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 info that we're talking about? Uh, something Fucking else. Smile on that guy's face, <laughs> squirting shit into you. <laughs> Listen, I'll get ad block on this secondary. Mon uh, not mon uh, secondary browser. This is content though. You'd, you'd be losing. You'd be losing content. This is good. 
Yeah. You might want to just close the video that's popped up. It doesn't have sound on. Unless it's like some fucking porn advert. I don't think they would go that low though. <laughs> yeah, anyway. no, I think the, the biggest news here is that it's gonna be on the game pass uh from the yeah. And um which I I'm fairly sure this is correct, but Victoria 3 was meant to be on the Game Pass, but was pulled. That's um, correct. And I said that in my my video, was Victoria 3 successful? Victoria 3, when it was announced, was advertised and publicised by Paradox and Xbox themselves to be on the Xbox Games Pass, on PC, of course. Only on PC. Yeah. Um, but they pulled it a few months after that. A few months before release, it was in August 2022 they pulled it, and then the game came out in October. And it was a very quiet pulling of it. It was quiet, yeah. Like, it was like during their first gameplay stream, they quietly made a forum post. While everyone was looking elsewhere. So, and, and I had my theories as to why Victoria 3 was pulled. I was thinking, yeah, they really want to get everyone pre-ordering it, and they want to get everyone buying full price instead of getting it for a month and they wanted to get as much money well obviously they would but they didn't want to allow people to play it for a smaller amount of money realize it was shit and then not pay for the games pass and stuff like that but say skylines 2 on the other hand doesn't look like they have any concerns with that because you know it looks like a good game and yeah it'll be on their and there's, game there's jokes there's jokes about Oh, Paradox isn't developing it, so it's not going to be shit. But Paradox, the publisher as well, has done shit things. Like, to um, Prison Architect, for example, they, the the small company that finished that game, and they are like, this is our vision, it's finished, we're very happy with it, and uh, we're moving on to new, bigger and better things, and then Paradox bought the company and forced them to come out with another 12 fucking DLC or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but it's looking very good. It's looking very, very good. Um... It's looking clean. The uh, the scope of the game has massively increased because they leaked in that article. They said that they'd leaked um, that I think you can have nine tiles in a City Skylines one game for for building your city. You can have over a hundred, uh, which is yep. not confirmed, but over a hundred. Even if it's twenty seven, if it's three times as many, that's so much room to build your city. So the scope is really really cool. And that's Hopefully they get rid of the uh, the bird. I think it's probably the number one change I'm looking for. The bird can get in the fucking bed. Yeah, I hate that was bird. a silly gimmick. I remember the game came out ages ago, and I think Twitter was still a new, fun, gimmicky thing. People were like, oh my god. But speaking of that, we're on Twitter now to show this. I actually happened upon this tweet, and this directly speaks to something that happened to me when I was playing City Skylines 1 recently. I made a roundabout, and the AI couldn't go on a roundabout. They all went on one lane basically. The roundabout had like three lanes or the, the roads leading in and out of it had three lanes. All the traffic was sticking to one lane and getting blocked up and I was like you've got two other lanes to use based on the exit you're going to. And City Skylines 1 didn't have AI and stuff with their traffic that worked too well and it always had loads of traffic problems and roundabouts didn't work. And lo and behold, and, and of course by the way I, I tried installing loads of mods to deal with that. So and with mixed results on how they fixed that roundabout. And then lo and behold, I happen upon this tweet that directly fixes roundabout AI. And I'm, I'm just that I don't I never played City Skylines too much. I know a bit about it. But even in my little small experience of it recently, I ran into a problem and then I see this tweet and the sequel is gonna fix it. And that is really promising to me. Like and then they have a whole yeah. dev diary about traffic AI and how they're improving it. And it they're just yeah, it just looks like it's going to be such a good sequel to City Skylines 1 from what we're reading. I can't find much bad stuff about it. Can you? Can anyone in the chat? Can no, anyone? No, I think my, my, my only criticism so far about from what I've seen was that original um, trailer. I thought it was just... <laughs> I'm surprised that it's actually ended up looking so good because that first trailer had no gameplay at all and it's just always so fucking almost disturbing when it's like you know new game coming out and it's all just uh you know animation it's uh, you know yeah but yeah. um i think uh i think i'm excited for this 
And there's also there has been game, there has been gameplay now, and a few YouTubers have gone in. Some YouTuber actually made the city that was used in a recent trailer, and he talked about it. It's all positive. Um. Yeah, again, this is not a Paradox developed game. It's merely published by them. This is Colossal Order, who made in City Skylines One a very good game, if a bit janky, tra traffic not working, stuff quite janky, but just a really good game. And it seems like. If everything that they're promising and talking about in all of this is true and it's going to live up to the hype, this could be, you know, the best city building game ever. If City Skylines 1 wasn't already, I don't know, some people might say that, probably is. And then this game will then blow that one out of the park, they're going to make a good sequel. The more I read about this and see about City Skylines, I can't find much to be negative about, except one concern. I'm going to ask you again, Pachucker, what's the one concern? The release date? It's quite soon. The performance and the, performance. the system requirements and stuff. You gotta listen, if it was if it was two hours ago, you would have had me to show away <laughs> performance. But <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Now I, I talked about how you could maybe dismiss performance concerns and it's something that isn't that important until late in development. But there are specific reasons to maybe be concerned about it in this game. So they're, they're doing massive graphic updates and stuff. It's going to look so much better and more realistic and blah, blah, blah. So they've got that. That's going to require a lot more power than the first game did. Um, both in your graphics card and the processor. Everything. And they're also making the cities massively bigger. Remember that jump from 9 tiles to 150 tiles by Chucker? Or 100, yeah. whatever it was? Yeah. If you combine that much of a massive increase in the size of cities and the massive graphical increase, we're looking at, logically speaking, what could be devastating or require very good PCs to get it to work and look great. Yeah, the only uh, uh, spec that I hit on the um, recommended specs there is <laughs> operating system and graphics card. I don't meet any of those. Yeah, I meet the recommended system rec recs, but my PC is quite old and my PC doesn't quite... I don't think it lives up to what its specs are anymore because it's so old and it's cr creaking at yeah. the seams. Uh, I meet the minimum requirements, um, but having a recommended requirement, or sorry, having a minimum requirement of an Intel i7 is quite a lot, isn't it? I mean, it depends on the generation. Yeah. Because there's i5s that are better than i7s, you know, and yeah. i9s that are worse yeah. than i7s. 780 isn't very good, that's old. Um, yeah, my graphics card is a 1070. So that's the previous generation of the recommended and one 10 below. And my graphics card is six gigabyte graphic memory thing. And this is recommending 11. So I'm, I'm not going to hit these recommended specs at all. My processor is an i7. Can't remember exactly which i7 it was. But it's not as good as this one, I don't think. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. I doubt I'm going to be able to stream and play City Skylines with good graphics, City Skylines 2 with good graphics when it comes out. But I might get a new PC by then anyway, so maybe. Because I, from everything I've talked about, the game looks so positive, I actually really want to play it. And I would get it on the Xbox Game Pass. Of course, because it's cheaper. Yeah, for a dollar. What is it? Is it a dollar? For your first month, a dollar. And then after that, seven or eleven or something. Not much. I've got a 3060. I've got a fancy graphics card. That's pretty good. But I'm uh, bottlenecked by everything else. I've got 8 uh, gigabytes of RAM. That hurts. I can only have two tabs open at once. <laughs> 4 gigabytes each. Yeah, 4 gigabytes each. So, yeah. Performance concern. I could, you know. I'm, I'm more than happy if my performance concerns are just blown away when the game actually comes out and people go, oh, you know, all those people concerned about performance, they were just dooming, they were wrong. I would be perfectly happy uh, to be to have that happen, but it might not, uh, especially from the evidence we have so far. And uh, even with Victoria 3, a lot of people talk about Victoria 3's performance being shite, especially in the mid and late game. And it's a very common thing in games these days, performance problems, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. There's just less polish overall. Uh, and for some games, polish, uh, you know, isn't even being roughed out, let alone polish. 
A couple of very important messages though in chat. We've got Lord Lambert saying, clearly you need more supers so you can upgrade your PC. And Quake Riley says, if only there was a way we could help Spud be able to upgrade his PC. So he yeah. could run some new Skylines too. I yeah, can't well, think of a way. Well, maybe I'll give, I'll give chat the benefit of the doubt on this stream. Maybe instead of going with the super chats they normally give, especially since we were talking about Patreon earlier, maybe I've got 20 new Patreon supporters for all I know. Let me just check my emails. Let's see if I've got any new Patreon supporters on this stream. I'm, I'm giving you the benefit of the chat, the benefit of the doubt. Let's see if you've all gone to my Patreon instead. Have you? I'm checking. Is this where everyone's gone? No, have, um, no, no new Patreons. They might have paid, uh, put my cash in an envelope. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, maybe. Sent it to Patreon HQ. <laughs> I wonder if they accept that as a way of payment. No, I'd no, no. <laughs> I would say no. I mean, surely, you know, there's got there's always that one person, there's always that boomer. Anyway, he puts cash <laughs> in an envelope, yeah, mails it to Patreon so they can. <laughs> no, there's no way. No, I'm joking, um, but I am actually thinking of a PC, a new PC, pretty soon. No. Um, you know, maybe I can do a stream where I talk about that more, and. Uh, Maybe people will super chat me then, thinking, "Oh, we'll get Spud his new PC so he can keep playing, so he can keep playing his twelve-year-old games." He really needs yeah. a big PC. Nah, I'm playing City Skylines too. I need a good PC for that. And Gilded Destiny. 30, I bought my thirty sixty off a guy who's a real, he's a friend of mine, he's a real tech sort of a guy. And he's like, "What sort of stuff are you gonna be running on your thirty sixty? And I was like, "Fuck," <laughs> you know. Uh... Victoria T, you ever heard of it? No, no, no. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> if anything, the graphics card isn't important for a Victoria 2 game. You need a good processor instead. No. No. Uh, we, cra we crowdfund Spud to get a new graphics card so he can play CS2. Yeah, I think it would be a very nice stream, to be honest, playing a little bit of uh, City Skylines 2. Just uh, parking up. I've done a few streams of City Skylines. I don't know if you've done any streams of City Skylines. I have very quite relaxing. recently. It's good. It's nice. But then you always run into problems because, well, you run into problems that they're addressing in the sequel. You run into traffic problems, like the traffic AI. If you read this, um, I don't know enough about the traffic in depth, but I know that... Um, is it in here? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Pathfinding works in a different way in City Skylines too. In City Skylines, pathfinding was proximity-based meaning agents would calculate their destinations or order services by straight line distance without taking the existing road network into account. Um, in City Skylines 2, agents choose a route based on a pathfinding cost. It's taking everything into account. So they're not just going to blindly pick a line that's the shortest possible distance and go, yeah, we'll just we'll take the, the lowest common denominator route, like lightning. Uh, they'll just They'll pick all sorts of factors into how they choose to go, such as you know, costs, you know, agent pref preferences. And that's just comfort. Look, this is so good when you think about yeah. it. Yeah, there is there is a thing like um, in City Skylines 1 where you'd create like a, a bypass or like a second road if one road was getting overloaded. And uh, it would make fuck all of a difference because yeah. I, I guess that explains it actually. If the, if the new bypass that you create is a longer distance to the destination, than the existing road. They'll still just pile up on the existing road because it's shorter. They don't take that they don't take the traffic into consideration, I think. I'm speaking generally, but there were a lot of mods that address loads of things. And one thing again about this sequel that is really good is that they are taking things from mods, they're taking things from their past DLC and upgrading and putting them into a sequel. Into the base game. Into the base which is, game. Which is big. This is not a Paradox developed game, as you can tell from that. Paradox never does that, ever. But this company is not afraid to, even if they are under the watchful, uh, uh, what's it, fucking, publisher hood of Paradox. They're not following Paradox yeah. development strategies. The watchful eye of Tencent. Yeah, or, true. Uh, yeah, or Paradox, I suppose. Um, but someone asked what my budget is for a new PC. I don't think. I'm afraid to go all out on getting an i9 latest processor and a 470 Ti. I think I might just go for that. 
but um it's diminishing returns this but it's very I mean, it's hard much, to, yeah it's much better to get something that's really really like good instead of excellent and then upgrade to good in a couple of years because if you get excellent i don't know although the way yeah. computing is going you know the um rate and rate of improvement is slowing down so potentially just go all out yeah. i don't know is it's, amd it's better than intel for processors though which one's better value for money is all i'm interested in i mean it's hard to talk about these pc building streams and stuff without getting into my personal financial situation which goes into but that's just stuff i don't really want to talk about but it's hard mm. to talk about how much i'm willing to spend on buying a pc without it and if i was completely open with my financial situation maybe people would be more willing to crowdfund the spud gun pc but i don't want to do that so i guess i'm st i'll be stuck here getting no super chats but we'll see it's all good it's all good 2k yeah, should be my budget you're, you're, yeah. you're gonna do reverse psychology and that's how you end up on live stream files you're to go how do i return these donations i don't need them right you know this is too much you're too kind spend this on yourself 2k ish and, uh, is uh yeah two i think if you're looking for a good processor and the 470 ti 2k ish pounds is the budget for that and i don't think i can be asked building a pc this time i think i'll just buy one as it is i don't i don't think i can be asked building a pc something will go it's wrong fun though. it's good to, it's a good time it's relaxing yeah it's nice it's fun doing it all yourself amd is much Maybe. cheaper It, work. it does it has worked on this stream i haven't gotten any passive super chats like i normally do but when mm. i have asked for them they do deliver yeah well no, honestly it's, it's, just, it's just it's we're we're a rinky dink operation we're just we're just two people trying our best to bring you guys a, you know we're just we're doing it all for you we're trying to make you guys laugh and anything that you could give would make the world of difference i like to think that what i'm offering here and what pie chucker is offering what we're offering here you can't really find it anywhere else can you i mean is anyone else is any other content creator as frank about everything as us because nah. we don't take sponsorships and shit. we're just sitting here giving real honest thoughts and we're really putting in a lot of banter when we're not afraid to take the absolute piss out of a game even if we really love it and love the idea of it I haven't found much to take the piss out of City Skylines 2 though. Apart from their trailer. Their trailer was the one. Yeah, never mind. Their we did. trailer was dog shit, yeah. <laughs> and their whole party was insane. Their first initial yeah. trailer, that is. They've yeah. done better now. Yeah. No, I'm very impressed with City Skylines 2. I think this is looking very good. Although seeing is believing. Don't pre order anything. Oh, don't pre order um, it. Oh, God, no. I'm no, going to play it on the a, Games you Pass. Can get, you can get access to, I think it's nine unique buildings. Yeah, just mod the buildings in anyway, mate. Come on. <laughs> just mod them in, yeah. Take note of cool. Linus Tech Tips for expert. Do, do people still take Linus Tech Tips seriously as the great source of everything? I've, I've, only, seen them, I've only seen them being memed dead to death over the past few years. Are they still good? I think he's retired. I think I heard about that. He retired. Oh. How old is he? Yeah. Retiring at what? 32? Yeah, well, he's been very successful. Or maybe he's just stepping back or something. He's doing something else. I don't know. But yeah, I used to watch yeah. a lot of tech tips back in the day when he'd do his crazy builds. You know? Yeah. He didn't retire. He's just a CVO instead of CEO. What the fuck is a CVO? Chief, Chief. Volatile Officer. I don't know. Volatile. Yeah. Vol <laughs> he's volunteer. <laughs> he's become a volunteer. He's not taking a wage anymore. Chief Vision Officer. Oh, vision. Oh, look at these Visionary. really corporate, airy-fairy yeah. words. Smell your own farts with that one. That's shocking. <laughs> Chief, Chief Vision Officer. Well, I mean, to be fair, maybe Paradox needs one. They've got no fucking vision. No. Well, the Bulgarians. Throwback joke. There we go. Mm. The Bulgarians. Ah, great eminence. Poor them. Well, they're not poor. They're no. actually the opposite of poor. The guy's a fucking millionaire. <laughs> no, not poor them. Fuck that guy. No, Shopping. you can't. No, no, no. Don't, don't go that. Don't. Uh, no, 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 no. Fuck that guy in a professional okay. sense, not in a personal sense. You mean like fuck personally? That guy. Yeah, personal. Personally, that sucks. Professionally, fuck that guy. 
I suppose. CS, Chief Synergy Officer. <laughs> Chief um, Pivoting Officer. Chief pivot, Pivoting Officer. Now, what, what is now here's Chief the thing. Chief Diversity Officer. Oh, there's that. Now, I had these two dev diaries of Victoria 3 up, but you know what? I'm closing. I don't want to fucking talk about it. There is one last thing I did. <laughs> yeah, just forget the latest Victoria 3 news. There is one thing <laughs> that I wanted to talk about and maybe joke about a bit. Europa Universalis 4 is offering a new type of DLC. Who could have seen that coming? If there's any game that's going to offer a revolutionary new type of DLC for you to spend your money on, it's this fucking game. Came out in 2013, by the way. A revolutionary new DLC of history lectures um, to listen to while you're playing, presumably in the music player. What do we think of that, everyone? I Not don't much. even know how to react to that. I'm trying to summon some words. Monetizing third party history podcast. I'm sure it must be licensed. It must be licensed, um, obviously. Yeah. China history lessons, Japan history lessons. Well, yeah. it's a fucking complicated game, by the way. Like, if you're a. You know, if you're buying this, it'd be pretty fucking hard to play Europa, especially with, you know, the 900 mechanics that the game has now. Yeah, um, it's like and fucking... listen to a history lesson at the same time. Oh, I'm just I'm just learning this really interesting fact about this Qing Empire. Well, this Ming Empire. Where... Oh, so oh no, my estate's loyalty went down by one percent, and they just rebelled. No, sorry, pause the lecture. I think that would be the I tell, experience. I tell you what, I'd, I tell you what, I'd rather do, Squid. I'd rather have a browser of choice tab open and be listening to the Armchair Historian. Oh yeah. Anything other than European episodes. <laughs> yeah, for the amount of history content that you can get on YouTube for free, what's yeah. the point of buying this? Yeah. I'm not saying that these are gonna be as always with Paradox, a lot of their stuff. I have no doubt that these are good lectures or lessons in their own right, and they're probably fantastic historians who have done great research and will give you fascinating stuff, but is it worth the money when you can get really free good podcasts, history, lectures, and videos, mm. documentaries. Anywhere else, even on TV. Just hop on yeah, the History Carla. Channel and you can get a documentary yeah. about fucking storage wars or something in America. You can get access to all of Dan Cullen's stuff for a dollar. I think. Yeah, I don't know who that is, but that sounds like an you Xbox know. Game Pass level. Hardcore, price. hardcore Histories? I'm sure you've heard uh, Hardcore Histories. No. Can we get some roasting and chat? Because Spud doesn't know who Dan Cullen is. All right then. Or if nobody knows who Dan Cullen is, can people roast me for fucking mentioning shit that nobody knows all the time? One somebody the has to know Dan Cullen. Who's gonna get roasted Manal. here? Me or you? What the fuck? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, I'm actually on the edge of my seat. Who is that? Fuck. There we go. Who is <laughs> my that? Fate Dan Cullen. Oh. Who doesn't? Who? Oh, there's a lot of who's coming in. Anyone? I'm going to make another YouTube account, just so I can agree with myself. One person, I can have one person. Oh. Fucking spot on, Pachucker. Yeah, great one. And another classic reference from Pachucker. Yeah. Dan Carlin, fucking love that guy. Yes, Wait. Dan Carlin rocks, Lamau. Fuck. One guy. Dan Carlin. Have you ever heard of Dan Carlin? Anyway, this is, we're, we're grinding the show to a halt. The guy was on Joe, oh, yeah, Joe Rogan. There you go. There's What's your it? historian, right? Yeah. You want to play EU4 listening to Joe, the latest Joe Rogan experience? Is this a Kiwi thing? I like hardcore history. There we go. We're starting to get some people on. Fantastic. Oh. There we go. See? Okay, we'll call it a... Should we call it a draw? Mm, I don't... I don't know. I don't mind. It's fine. Sure. Joe Rogan been, EU4 Have DLC. you been looking at... um? Uh, any other games? Anything else been on your radar? I saw this game called Espiocracy. I'm going to have a quick look at that. Um, something to just have a look at. I don't know much information about it. Yeah, this thing is coming up. Uh, store page. 
Take a look at this one, everyone. What do you think? Let's just watch this trailer. Starts with a CIA motto. The only way to avoid this catastrophe is to have a new attitude. We must start now. Are they going to have the Bezmenov thing in their trailer like Call of Duty did? I wonder. Let's see. Have Kevin Spacey, maybe. Nah, no, probably not. Lead the Today intelligence agency knowledge. of your choice. Espionage agents are operating everywhere. This is a map of divided. Launch coups and proxy wars. Hmm, it's like CWE, yeah, it's like CWE. Or the Cold War game that Paradox never made. Germany, West and East, tower. Free um, and Conrad. It's giving me Twilight Struggle vibes, which is, I'll oh, just explain because nobody will know what it is. It's a board game uh, in the Cold War era where you do um, this sort of shit. You do proxy wars and you handle the CIA and stuff like that, or the KGB on the other side. Right, interesting. Yeah, there's Terra and Victor, by the way. I have that game. I haven't played it yet. But it sort of seems like that. But let's continue. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Vents popping up. Hunt spies. 19 channel traffic. 8 special missions. 4 air evac and two embassy flights. Well, there you go. Someone said published by Hooded Horse, but looks interesting. What's Hooded Horse? I don't know. I have no idea. Oh. Have you heard of World Warfare and Economics? One thing that I've just realized is Twilight Struggle could be a very good one to um, play on stream. Because you uh, take, so you're either the USA or the Soviet Union, and you're sort of, it's like a map game that's sort of, you're battling for influence. And it's uh, yeah. it's sort of board gaming. It's very good. It's a, and it only takes a couple of hours, I think. Message me it. So. I'll have a look after the stream later on. I will. Trailer is just a bunch of old films. Yeah, I get. I, I guess we we get the point of what it is. It's a grand strategy game where you spy on stuff, and it's all about the espionage and stuff. And it does leave me wondering. Um, when you have a grand strategy game, what you want to be taken care of is the economics and diplomacy. You want to be doing all the stuff. I wonder how it would work if it's what you're focusing on is the spying element. How do the other aspects of the country get modeled? Like, what yeah. level of importance would they put on the economy and other stuff? Well, you could quite easily have a whole game just about influencing governments and things like that. So, it's probably, yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting. But that means the non influence stuff has to be kind of AI driven so that you basically go through a normal Cold War, the AI drives through it and you have slight little bits of impact and influence but because i don't it depends on how much you're really fully controlling the country that you're playing as mm. or just its spy network and its um intelligence agency but again it's another it's another upcoming grand strategy game release date 2024 it's becoming like the buzz lightyear thing on a shelf <laughs> Hey, I'm an upcoming grand strategy game due to be released in 2024. There's like thousands of them now. Looks like, it looks like um, Victoria Three left a big gap in the market, eh? Yeah. Also, the uh, the names for all of these grand strategy games are insane. Espiocracy. That one's clever. It's clever, but if if you were to say that three times fast, it's difficult. Espiocracy. I feel like uh, if you're a marketing. If you're a marketing guy, you would you have a field day with that. Although they'd probably uh, simplify it. <laughs> I'd probably say, call it a espionage dash democracy. 
Um, it's not meant again, to be, it's, it's not meant to come from democracy. Ocracy is just the, the yes, autocracy, thing for anything. Yeah. 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 And espion, espionage, espion in French, spy. So spy, ocracy, spy, spy government. Mm. So, so the map looks name. very nice. I like the way the map looks. Actually, that's a fair point. Yeah, it's looking. The map looks like more of a paradox thing that we're used to than every, everything we've looked at so far as well. Yeah. More of what we're used to. None of that globe nonsense, none of that hex nonsense. We're back on the map. Proper map. Proper map. It looks good. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's looking very good. I like the events there with the uh, real images. It's nice. That's not a real image. It's not AI generated. They... Is that... <laughs> They, they took the hexes out of the map, but they put the hexes oh, okay. in the people instead. <laughs> it's, so far, <laughs> it's so far away that I, I, I saw that as a... Uh, real... hmm. um, a game that I've been looking at and playing recently is a game called Kingdoms Reborn. And that's a game where it's like a sort of a city building resource management game. It's got an economic model, which is really cool. It's like a free market... Um, Economic sim. I don't know if anybody's heard of that. Kingdoms Reborn. It's Again, not a trash link me, name. Link me I actually will. I will say, Espiocracy. I was too harsh on that. It was a good name. I, what what is the name of the Armchair Historians project? Again, it's Imperial Dawn. Dawn. Imperial Dawn. Yeah. I think he was choosing. He was deciding between Dawn of Empires and Imperial Dawn or something. Imperial Dawn. It's always those two words. It's always the two-word format. Well, Espiocracy isn't. Yeah. It? Um, someone said that this looks like, in the chat, Joe, uh, Ross from Friends, this, something like that. Yeah, when Which I... Which one? The image I have now actually does look at, like it could be from a sitcom or something. It doesn't look like a spy. It looks like a little st still from a sitcom. What's a, what's a sitcom from the 60s, I'm trying to think. Oh, cheers, cheers, cheers is old, but it's not that old. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it could be, it could be a sitcom type thing. The um, the map looks very good. Um, yeah, this looks very tidy. This looks very actually quite far far along in development. Yeah, it could be smart. Xvideo Studios. Man. Have they got any track record? No. Oh, let's go to their website. Wait. Why not? Let's do a bit of digging. Let's see what let's see what these people are all about. Let's see. I mean, they're making the game about espiocracy. It's about spying. It's about the CIA. So surely they could expect people to do a bit of digging on them as well. So let's see where, what they're all about. Mm, look under the hood. Let's see. Let's follow the money. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, they don't actually have their own website. Wait. The game has a website, I think. Yeah. Wow, this is interesting. Nice uh, style. Oh, oh, what's this? Gameplay will follow common grand strategy features, real time with pauses, borrow interesting elements from various games, e.g., hooks from Crusader Kings 3, pops. It's going to have a pop system. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold good, up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. It's going to have a pop system? Whoa, whoa. Wow. Okay. Very also, interesting. it's not it's not just uh, KGB and CIA. It's MI6, Stasi, Mossad. Yeah, it's like se it's a a seventy four. Yeah. You can play as yeah. No. That's very cool. So, who did Horse start an indie game publisher? Play as the GCSB, which is uh, New Zealand CIA. Yeah, like the one little tiny office. No, no, they just, raided. Um, they raided Kim dot com. Just Good sitting things. there reading the latest newspaper, going, oh, "I wish we were influencing. I wish we were influencing these events, eh?" Yeah, that's all they do. Cooing uh, Fiji. <laughs> what could they? What could New Zealand launch a coup against? Nothing. Tonga, Samoa, maybe one of those little islands that's probably under yeah. New Zealand's government anyway. Yeah, like some semi-autonomous sphere island. Of, sphere of influence. Who the? I guess the RSPCA. <laughs> what? There's a chat going on here. I, I think I'm, is my. Where's the? Who said that? Marinara sauce. Oh yeah, <laughs> spy on pet owners. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, this looks promising and interesting. So, 
Again, uh, I've said this before, my channel, Spotgun Official, has an abundance of positive crap. We had Open Vic, which is like the elephant in the room. That's coming. That's the most positive thing you've ever seen. And now we also have, even without Open Vic, loads and loads of positive projects being done. Apart from Grey Eminence. Well, SPocracy, Gilded Destiny, and the Armchair Historian Project. And if Grand Strategy isn't the only thing you're after, you've also got City Skylines too. So there's a lot in this field to look for, uh, look forward to. We don't have to doom about Victoria 3. So yeah, lots of great stuff to be positive about. Problem yes. is, the problem is my positive stuff doesn't get as much views as my negative stuff. I hate that. It's a pretty common theme, you know. Complaining about Victoria 3 will get way more views than being positive about some other upcoming game. But I don't know. If uh, if Gilded Destiny has infinite money, maybe they can sponsor me and I'll, they'll get me a new PC. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, if this game looks yeah. very tidy as well. So Yeah, this game looks good. Um, yeah, it does. I wasn't blown away by the look of the last games we talked about. Maybe City Skylines put that aside. This game really looks good just on the map. Looks very yeah. good. I like the map and it's just borders are clean and it looks very familiar from paradox you know from paradox maps very interesting open vic coming 2024 that's funny yeah luck good luck good luck getting open vic in 2024 that's if we can just get if we can just get one easy payment of one million dollars no, 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 no. Oh. Give me a $1 million super chat, and I'd only get 700000 of it, and YouTube would get $300,000, by the way. That's how super chats work. But, um, yeah, OpenVic is making steady progress. We, we've said from the start and constantly say that we're, they're taking it very slowly, being very careful, getting meticulously right. And they're currently between dev cycles, planning what they're going to do next with requirements, so... There's been a bit of lull in stuff we can show off, but that's about to pick up again as the development of that cycle gets underway. So that's the Open Vic update. Um, still very, very positive, very happy about that project, and all the lads in it and the lasses are fantastic. So, uh, why haven't the Super Chats been so forthcoming this time as they are in the previous ones, Pie Chucker? What's going on? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. We might need to do more psychological psyops. We need to do more super chat psyops. Yeah, we need to take a bit more out. inspiration from this game. Yeah, we could sponsor ourselves. We could do like a. We could do like an ad read. You know, where what? It, it could pan away. It could pan away to a pre-recorded thing where it's just. Uh, well, I could you sponsor I... your upcoming videos. Yeah. <laughs> we, could, we could sponsor each other. <laughs> Just me and you sponsor each other. I yeah. give you money to sponsor me, and you give me money to sponsor you. That's like an infinite money generator. Exactly. That's just uh, that's infinite capital right there. Yeah. Maybe Gilded Destiny start, you, and um, Grey Eminence could do that to each other too. You could start a network of channels. You could have, uh, you know, you could have your Victoria Three chat channel be um, Hassan Rabi, whatever that guy's name. Oh. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't mention this when we were talking about it earlier. Wait, did I get pinged in the Guild of Destiny? Oh, yeah. Hey, whoa. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Mark, Mark himself just added oh, Mark me. himself? He's, he's, he's on the stream. Oh, my goodness. The, the thumbnail on it is always wrong, though. But he, he, uh, Kenneth has pinged me saying, please tell Pychucker we may consider his offer to narrate a trailer. Wow. See? Look how good they are. They know what's That's going fantastic. on. That's fantastic. I'd love to. I'd absolutely love to. You're in. Um, that would be, that'd be very cool. <laughs> Here we go. That's very cool. Well, shout out to Mark from California. Based. Based in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. We've blown up. So, <laughs> what, calling him based? Opportunity gone. Yeah. There we go. I smashed my mic in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You sound different again. Your voiceover wouldn't yeah. be so good after smashing your mic. It doesn't sound as good. It's because it's got. Sp I've got like a. I've got like a. Two three hundred dollar mic on like a three dollar mic stand, and it's all springs. And so whenever I tap it, the springs go like, you know. Right. Uh, you just heard the noise. I don't need to recreate it. Actually, tell you what. One question I'm probably going to ask the Gilded Destiny people is what they're doing with multiplayer. I haven't actually seen multiplayer be talked about or mentioned with them. 
I can I can only assume that they would do multiplayer. It's a game that would lend itself to multiplayer well, just like Vic Two, and yeah. arguably Three if you're into it. Yeah, they ought to do multiplayer. But getting multiplayer right is always very hard, as I've learned from the Open Vic project, and and playing Victoria Two and everything going out of sync. And do they have a big enough team to have someone do that? I don't know. It's a very complicated task. He's got an ASMR thing going on now. Yeah, my uh, my microphone's a funny beast. It's a funny creature. I've also quit smoking, so I'm gonna go back to sounding. Uh, I don't know. Your voice Whatever. already sounds. I don't know. Not, I don't think anything would change. The damage has been done, so to speak. <laughs> the damage has been done. Yeah, forty thousand cigarettes does take a does take a toll on the old vocal cords. I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to uh, sound like a pipsqueak. I don't know. Hmm. Buttery smooth, very nice. Well, thank you for another super chat, marinara sauce. Thank you very much. I'm marinara sponsored sauce. by right. marinara sauce. <laughs> there's a there's another thing we could do. We could say marinara sauce is our current favorite viewer. Oh. And then you're doing some psychological psychological stuff. We like marinara sauce the most. He definitely Apparently. has been carrying this stream. That's he for sure. He has been carrying this, or she. Let's not assume. Yeah, sorry. They. Yeah. They. Discord. We we uh, talked about Discord usernames earlier. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything here. I'm just stating Discord added uh, the pronoun ability to add pronouns to your profile along with the recent username changes. Um, what do I you think of that? No, 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 no. I don't think anything of it. I mean, I don't think anything about it. No, I don't mean I don't think anything of it as in I think uh, it's low or bad. What are you really saying? I'm neutral. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I personally haven't opted to add pronouns to my profile. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so this is why you guys need me. I ask the hard-hitting questions. It keeps fun uh, on his toes. That's true. <laughs> Uh, oh, fuck, we have to t fuck Discord's use. I'm talking about the username change, not that, but, but fuck Discord's username change. Um, do we have anything else to complain about there? No, I like marinara sauce though. Not at, well, also the the YouTube commenter, obviously, um, but also just marinara sauce in general. You can get it a you can get it at Subway. Very very nice. Um, we're sponsored by that sauce now, so we have to say that. Yeah. Well, we could, you know, eventually we build up, we'll get sponsored by Subway. Subway in New Zealand is a depressing sight at the moment because we don't have any fruits and vegetables. So you just show up and there's salami on offer and that's about it. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to just start begging. Gilded Destiny, please fucking sponsor me. Look, I've done my best. I've got this channel where I fucking criticize Paradox. They don't like me. Uh, everyone hates me. Uh, I tried to. I have a fledgling existence on a few super chats here and there, and a bit of ad revenue, a Patreon, and the occasional Twitch sub. Just sponsor me and get this over with. I need a new PC, and I've got plans in my personal life. Um, oh, th here we go. Marinara Sauce is super the best user. He no, was already the it. best user. Yeah, don't worry about it, Gilded Destiny. We're covered now. <laughs> Gilded Destiny, please. I take back everything I've said about. I don't care if I look like I'm shilling your game. I'll shill Gilded Destiny. I'll do it. It's worth shilling. Because it's just a small company. Well, we don't know how small they are. Apparently they have unlimited money. They're a 11, small development 11 team. 11 to 50 people, yeah. They're a small team on the development side. But they get their money from fucking Hong Kong. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, and also, Gilded Destiny, you can you can sponsor Spud and then not sponsor me so we can keep it, we can keep it unbiased. Or... You can sponsor Spud and then hire me to do all of your trailer work. Here's what we'll and, actually uh, do. <laughs> We're going to sponsor me and not Pie Chucker. Me and Pie Chucker oh. will feign a falling out over this, and then yes, we will launch, good. much like Espiocracy here, we will fake a dialectical fight between us about Gilded yeah. Destiny being good or bad, ultimately with the goal of just making Gilded Destiny go up and be promoted anyway. Yeah, through yeah and I'll, 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 I'll uh, even, even my critiques will be just complete nonsense. I'll be like, I don't care for that innovative globe. I don't. I don't. I don't like how um, creatively satisfying that is. I don't like how different it is. It's too unique for my taste. Yeah. Advanced shilling techniques. Oh well, wait. Neither of us have really shilled. 
and so it's gonna be it's gonna be a journey i just kind of shield the games that we've been talking about here in a way we're wait, taking wait, the wait. piss out of all of them though apart from no Mark. no we don't have, no, we have even with parrot well maybe we've taken the piss out of man word man word what the fuck i'm trying what to say, Martin, say? Man word. <laughs> man word. <laughs> i tried to say martin and word in terms of i was about to say we don't take the piss out of individual paradox employees when we criticize them but then i think well maybe i have taken the piss out of martin and word a bit and then i just said man word that's a short way of saying martin and word it's just a short version of his name. Uh, you reckon that's when he gets called in the office? Yeah, it's like his name's too long. They have to shorten it. Hey, man, we're over here. Need a bit of a. <laughs> need a. Give me. How do I automate this warfare and make it shit? Cheers, cheers, man, word. Cheers. Bit of advice on that, please. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're getting the super chats in. We've hit. How long is it after? How long is it that the streams have to be going on before the super chats come in? Uh, it's like our past streams. It gets to this bit at the end, and then they start rolling in. And I can buy a new PC. Um, anyway. So Maranianosos gave $10. Thank you very much. You might know me as the guy who keeps paying you to stop the stream or the one with the first three names. Remember him, Pachaka? I do remember him. I don't remember what his first three names were. It was like Bob John Dave or something. That Bob John Dave has now become Marinara Sauce. Yeah, see, so Marinara Sauce might say... How, wait, how do you pronounce it? Is it a mar marinara or is it marinara? I don't know. What, what anyway, language is it from? Fuck, Italy. Italian. Marinara. 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 Soce. Is it Greek? Is it... I don't know. Uh, Quake Riley, yeah. with 10 pounds, thank you very much. Have you considered getting a sponsorship with the hottest mobile game on the market, Raid Shadowland? No. And I've actually been offered that one, you see. So... I'm out here, I just come on these streams, I don't do the fucking Raid Shadow Legends even though I've been offered it, and I struggle by scraping an existence out of this, uh, while turning down hot um, sponsorships. Um, what was I going to say, regarding Raid Shadow Legends, probably this is an opportunity to sponsor ourselves, uh, Raid oh, yes, Shadow yes. Legends it was a fantastic uh, legendary character in a CK3 series with Dino Stan that you guys might have seen. Uh, man, but you can't start Manward in the chat while I'm trying to fucking talk. That's it, it's Manward. <laughs> Manward. Um, that's his initial. M. Anward. That's his name. Manward. <laughs> I'm sorry if this is like getting too personal with him, but it's funny. He, he could be laughing at this as well, right? Oh. Uh. Sure, he has a good sense of humour. He made Victoria 3 the biggest joke you've ever seen. Ah, <laughs> uh, anyway, go on. Tell us about the... Oh, fuck. Anyway, what was I even saying? I mean, how do I begin again? I <laughs> suppose you're living in poverty. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not living you in poverty. You sounded like such a martyr, but... Really I'm not <laughs> really, okay. Yeah. But again, I don't want to talk about my personal finances. It's like... I'm not well off and I'm not poor off either, okay? I'm somewhere out there. But I also, I don't have a large enough assets to get the things I want, like a fucking house. So, but I'm not doing badly either. I don't know. There's some more detail. Now, mm. take it away, Pie Chucker, on the CK3 advert. Um, yeah, so Spud did a CK3 Game of Thrones mod. <laughs> Stop saying funny shit. I can't do this. This is hard. But anyway, Spud did a CK3 Game of Thrones mod campaign with Dino Stan and about 70, 80, 90 other players. And it has been turned in to a video by me. And it will be finished sometime between now and the heat death of the universe. And so Whoa. stay tuned for that. Sometime between now and when Grey Eminence gets its funding back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When they secure a million dollars in funding. All Pie Chucker is asking to complete this project is a publisher <laughs> to provide one million dollars. <laughs> one million New Zealand dollars as well. That's not much. That's, that's like five p, five pounds yeah. generously. Yeah. yeah, that's like that's like uh, three dozen strawberries in New Zealand. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for those super chats. Yeah, uh, we've got. Um, yeah, Maranara Sauce 
So we've confirmed that Marin Anasos is the same person as that one person who gave us ridiculous super chats at the end of yeah. that one stream way back whenever. It's the same person. So, you know. But we are coming to the end soon, and it's four o'clock. We've been streaming. Oh, well. It's been a long one. It's been a long one. This, um, how long has it been? What's the uptime? Like three and a half hours? Yeah. It's been a long one. Time flies by. Time yeah. flies by when you've actually got interesting things to talk about and not Victoria yes. 3. Yeah. Normally I'm like, uh, I set up an AI robot to respond to anything regarding Vic 3 and then I, I actually show up, I wake up uh, for the end of the stream. But this has been a fun stream all the way through because we've talked about interesting, interesting games. Such as Gilded Destiny. Yeah. My only concern is that um, in terms of, this might not get so many views. It had, they didn't have a massive viewer count like when we talked about our victory announcement stuff. And then after I release it publicly as a video afterwards, it's probably only going to get one or two K views. So, and all our interesting discussions about these games are kind of locked away inside the stream somewhere. So it's not going to get many views. It's not going to get much attention to these games yet, but I could edit something. You know, I could do some video. I, we could even edit this down, maybe. Yeah. Or yeah. I can just make a new video later about them. Individually or something. I don't know. I'm uh, I've, I told Spud this. I'm moving again, shortly actually, in the next couple of weeks. So once I've set myself up again in my next location, my next undisclosed location bunker, uh, I might yeah, I'm because I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like I might actually have a bit more time on my hands to start banging some stuff out, and that'd be cool. It would be cool because like even like you say, it's not like the most, it's not your bread and butter. It's not Victoria Two or whatever, but um, there is so much class stuff in these streams you know that's why we've got 100 people yeah it's 100... it's not the bread and butter but it's really important and we're talking about issues that are bigger than just vic 2 gameplay yeah but not don't get me wrong i've been editing the next episode of the bavaria series full time this week and this morning and i'll do more this evening and i'm and i'm actually loving the next episode it's gonna be really funny um Marinara source with a 20 us dollar donation keep man in the editor. absolutely of course if this is edited into a video that's going to be man and word, man word. that's such a like i don't even know how you've gotten that like obviously it's m and word but well like you've never said m and word like, I don't nobody know. would ever say that so that's just mad i just came up with man word i must have been trying to say something else <laughs> it's like squidward as well but martin and word it's really good. <laughs> Thanks funny. so much for the twenty dollars super chat. Again. Yeah, very, very generous marinara sauce. And this is why you remain our favourite. It turns out, now that we've linked him to being that other guy who gave us those super chats before, he is actually he, that guy before was the favourite viewer. And then he came and earned he came and re earned his slot as the favourite viewer without knowing he was already my favourite viewer. He came and earned yeah. it again. Yeah, don't Look compare this yourself. Fucking legend. He's going to do it again. He's going to change his yeah. name one stream in the future and become our favorite again, organically and independently. Look at this yeah. guy. Some some call me a violently generous man. There we go. We've got man confirmed. Marinara sauce. Violently Fantastic. generous man. He goes up to homeless people and is like, fucking take this fucking money and scares them. And yeah, But he gives them money. Cup. Yeah, fills it with $100 and then crushes yeah. it. No, he, he comes up to them. He crushes their cup and they're like, no, what are you doing? And then he... Hands them a hundred pound note. And that's nothing. You want this. Violently generous. Yeah. Yeah, no. Marinara sauce, you know, it's like that whole saying, you know? Don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to yourself. And that's what he's done with just topping himself repeatedly. Yeah, he tops himself. Well, not in that... <laughs> no, no. Not in that way. Yeah. No, he doesn't top himself. I hope he doesn't top himself or else my financial stream is gone. But no, uh, <laughs> leave. If you're gonna top yourself, leave something in your will for me. I'm sorry. These are such bad jokes. Where are they coming from? Stop. <laughs> fuck me. I don't have my, fuck. Also, a lot of viewers aren't gonna understand what that is, which is good. Yeah, the non-British. Uh, that's a very specific uh, yeah. Anglosphere type thing. So that's good. That's good. Yeah, forget it. Those who don't yeah, speak English as a native yeah. language just doesn't yeah. mean anything. Yeah. yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. Or it means literally what it is, which is improve over what you've previously done. Top yourself. Top what you've done. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't even know why it means that other thing. <laughs> Pop yourself? Is it something to do with your head? I don't know. Anyway, moving on quickly. Yeah. Well, there's nothing to move on to. <laughs> we're, just, we're at that stage at the end where we just talk absolute nonsense. There's nothing to move on to. This is it. What else? What's happening in uh, What's happening in New Zealand? Um, we've got the Women's FIFA World Cup at the moment. What? Yeah. It's being hosted by New Zealand. Oh. Uh, and, yeah. Looks like it's going to be pretty cool. They're all, most of the games are sold out, so I'm not going to go to any of the games. But, um, yeah, that's something that's happening in New Zealand right now. Apart from all the flooding and stuff. Are they going to be flooding on the pitches when they're playing? Oh, it'll just be slide tackling on there. It's just be turning into water. Yeah. Football. Yeah. Uh, we do have some Bavaria Part 4 though, I can say that that is going to be done in the next couple of days. I could get it out tomorrow or Saturday. There you go. Bavaria Part 4. My bread my bread and butter. Yeah. Tomorrow or Saturday. The Vic 2 video is doing really well at the moment. Yeah, they're getting the same amount of views as my subscriber count more or less. Just yeah. solidly sitting at 33k, which is kind of nice. It is nice. It's also it's nice, when, I was actually talking to Spud in private about this, but I, this actually might be an interesting thing to talk about, just as my, my experience, you know, um, is that going back and looking at Napoleon's legacy and some of the other videos that I made, having way more views than I than I, than last time I would have checked them, which would have been like a year ago. And it's really cool to see that people go back and, and look at your back catalogue, because I didn't really think that was a thing, I thought, you know. Uh, my, my conception of YouTube was you get all your views and then maybe a little bit of a trickle uh, after that. But tons of people have gone back and looked at this, that looked at that series or some of the other videos. Yeah. And that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. I get some backlog view. I get quite a lot of backlog viewership. It's never anything massive, but there's always a constant stream of, at any given time, I can look at my YouTube channel, I can see more live statistics on who's watching what at any given time. So. I can see that there's always one or two people watching the Muscovy series, the American Bloodbath, the Napoleon's Legacy thing, at any given time. It's got a little trickle of viewers constantly. And that's good because I design my videos. My videos aren't designed to be throwaway content that you just watch once on the day it comes out and then never think about it again. It's designed to be a series, like a TV series that you can get on a box set. I should release my videos on box set. Well, box sets aren't a thing anymore, but they're designed to be something that is accessible at any time, that isn't just a heat of the moment thing, like the throwaway crap that is a lot of YouTube, especially the shorts shite. Ugh. Oh, it's awful. It's horrible. Um, the demand is clear. When is the Spud Pie podcast happening? When is it happening, Spud? This is it! This is it. You're right watching now. it slash listening to it as we speak. Maybe I'll just put these on Spotify, like I've mentioned. Yeah. I never get you know, around to you, this know, shit. you know the way to do that, by the way? Seriously, this is actual, this is truth as well. Is that the way to do podcasts, if I was ever going to do a podcast, is you do a free episode and then you have a Patreon where you've got another episode. You oh. Know, and you, do, you do two a week or something like that. And that is genius. It works so well. How do you know? Have you done it because yourself? I've, I've, I've well... Uh, First off, I'm manifesting it into the universe. And then the second thing is, it's if you look at all the large podcasts, that's how a lot of them do it. Call it Spudcast. Well, half yeah. the duo is being missed out there a little bit, but that's fine. You know, I'm, a, I'm not an egotist. I'm a modest man. It could be called Spudcast. My cast. Casting is also... Yeah. Casting also has a sense of like throwing something out. It's also yeah. it's a bit like chucking. So pie, Spud, pie caster. Spud shark. Yeah, Spud Shark wouldn't really. It's not. It's not I great. cast her. But um, maybe next time we do one of these streams, I'll put Spudcast in the name. I'll start introducing yeah, we'll, it. We'll begin the we'll begin the branding. Uh, after I make a massive clickbait title about Victoria Three to get some viewers, which is the only way to get viewers on these. Um, Victoria Three confirmed something nonsense. Martin Manward. And then yeah. I put in brackets Spudcast episode five. Big big red circle around uh, man word. With his, man with his word. Face. Oh my god. <laughs> That's it now, by the way. He's man word forever. Forever man word. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> forever man word. 
And then when Manward himself hears about this joke, he's going to be angry. But then from the rest for the rest of his life, whenever he's signing a document, he's writes writes a sing M Manward. Oh fuck! Ah oh, damn him! Yeah, true, true. He's going to read it, Manward. No, oh, damn him! Damn that man! I sometimes wonder, and there's never any way of knowing this, but Paradox is a company that, you know, well, it's basically like any professional company. They don't really do much. They don't ever do any small talk or chat outside. They, they're very internal. They, their banter, their chatting is all within their company. They don't show their feelings about stuff like content creators. You know what I mean? They never talk about me. So you don't know what they feel about me or anyone else. They probably hate me. But well, I don't, you can never really know. Well, you're not really affecting their bottom line. Although I suppose some people are actually quite emotional about criticism. Well, if their bottom line is their um, feeling upset about criticism of the shit game they made, then maybe they would feel bad about it. You know but, what makes me feel um, good, though? What? Super Chats. Super Chats. Marinara uh, sauce makes me feel good. Maria, I'm spreading Marinara it out. Sauce. Yeah, it makes me feel real good. And you too can make us feel good with a Super Chat. Uh, YouTube Super Chat. We'll have to work on the advertisements. We'll have to do... We could do ad reads for like, um, what are the big podcasts? You guys, you, people must listen to podcasts. Tell us uh, some of the um, uh, like uh, podcast ad reads that are on, on at the moment. You like you get Squarespace. That's a classic. Uh, there's a sponsorship for them. Yeah, no, or no, no. We don't support these companies yet. Uh, we don't Maybe. not support them though. There's some chat here to respond to though. Um... Vitamin supplements that could be good. Magnus says, man is obsessed with Paradox. Well, I'm obsessed with them in the sense that I really love their old games and then they made a series of new games that aren't so good. And in particular with Victoria 3, it was a massive problem, uh, to say the least. So I talk about them now and again. And they're fun to talk about. And I find them interesting. So I wouldn't say obsessed. I think we've spent 99% of this stream not talking about them. Mm. But... We also have Base God Joe saying, I'm a game dev, and if the Paradox employees are anything like my peers, when it comes to criticism, then yeah, they probably do hate you. But I love so fuck Paradox, my God. You mean you love me or you love Paradox? Or... Well, you're saying fuck Paradox, but... I know they probably hate me, and I'm perceived as someone who absolutely just hates and a negative hater, but I will say again, genuinely, I, it's not personal against the people in Paradox. And we, no. I know we've just made fun of Martin Anwar, but that's... <laughs> It's not like we hate it. It's not like that. It's really not. No. Not from the bottom no. of my heart. I'll tell you what, and I'll, I'll prove that by saying something very nice about... Are you going to bring up his Stellaris track record? Yeah, go for it. Go. I'll leave you no, to no, it. No, no, no. I wasn't no? bringing up his oh, Stellaris right, okay. track record. I was okay. bringing up some, some very nice memories of mine where I would... Um, I've talked about this very briefly, but I used to Is it that the... night that you needed a lift home in the, the pouring rain and he gave I you was, one? It was four o'clock and I was at, I was at the airport in Stockholm and uh, my there was no taxi cabs but you know I saw this 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 man he was eating a vegetarian pizza and um, it was Manwood and he drove me to my hotel it was <laughs> it was Manwood moment. it was Manwood yeah he drove me he drove me uh, he drove me not to my hotel but a different hotel that didn't have a uh, <laughs> no fuck off. I can't even bother with it but um, no my um I have very nice memories of watching the uh, early early in development, probably like 2016, 2015, um, Europa dev clashes. And because Wiz would play in them and he was very funny. He was really funny and he was really entertaining. And uh, a lot of those guys are really like just genuinely entertaining, fun guys who work at Paradox. Um, you know, but they just, uh, they're not good at making games, that's all. And that sucks. Not anymore, yeah. No. no. They're great streamers. Oh, well, actually. Anyway, back then though. <laughs> I'm fucking Sam Tender. It's switched. It's, it's gone. And by the way, direction. all these people at Paradox, by the way, they all make more money than me. So they're having pretty comfortable yeah. lives. Um, and I'm out here being a hater. Well, I'm not a hater, but that's a joke. But you know, you know what I mean. So surely they can be happy and content in their lives. And uh, I'm here to criticize games sometimes. Generally, this was a very positive scene, though. Do you think Grey Eminence is ever actually happening? If the lead dev of it makes a million on the stock market, yeah. No. 
I'll, uh, I don't know. What's a charitable organization? That's like a decent charitable organization. Oh, SPCA. All right. I'll, I'll, we've got the SPCA. We don't have the RSPCA, but I'll give a hundred dollars of New Zealand money, which is three pounds. Um, and I'll give that to the SPCA if in the next two years, Great Eminence is released. Okay. Um, would you would you agree to that? Because there's just no fucking way that's happening. Although it kind of sounds like I'm not wanting to donate. The well, it's SPCA. not. A, it's not a very big <laughs> forfeit either. It's not no. that big a forfeit. I mean, no. But no, that's not so bad. My point of view still is that I want the Great Eminence to come out because it looked like an interesting, good game that I would love to play and try out and stream and all that. But yeah, it doesn't seem like it is. It really doesn't seem like it is because. Well, does it though? I mean, if they do get that money, they're in a good state and they were about to start the fucking closed alpha. Which is very I far mean, along. If that guy, if that guy's pissing away that much money and there's yeah, I, I doubt it. I I really that really changed the the way that I just felt about the whole thing after reading that. That's insane. You know? Not because there's anything wrong with pissing money away on the stock market. But as a business owner, and you've got employees, and you're taking public donations, and that's the kind of guy that you are. Well, he. That's just the. Again, uh, I have to point out for the, the record, and technically, he, well, at least as far as we know, he only gambled and lost that money on the stock market before he made his games company. As far as we know, the public thing where he talked about losing 700k was before that, so maybe he stopped doing it. Uh, past yeah. behavior isn't necessarily. An indicator of future behavior, but it can be. Yeah. With the smoke this far, it's <laughs> okay. I'm not bringing it back around. Maybe. Oh, yeah. But this yeah. is all public, and we know this stuff. And you know, the Reddit post was him publicly going, "You know, everyone, I lost 700k, and he got 4,000 upvotes. It's not exactly a secret." But um, someone says, "I'm still disappointed with CK3 not having half the stuff from CK2," and that's the perfect comparison to City Skylines 2. Because that sequel is coming out with stuff from its DLC, its mods, everything. And they're putting it in the sequel. Which is what you should do. And Colossal Order is doing it and Paradox doesn't do it. So yeah. See, the problem is with, like, if you're saying here, yeah, like Devil's Advocate type thing, it just doesn't work for their company, the way that they set things up. If they had released CK3 with, you know, let's say 70% of the content of CK2, then in three expansions, you're going to have shit tons of feature bloat, and it's going to be a bad game anyway. So you just have to choose when you want it to be a bad game. Do you want it to be a good game for a little while at the start, or a little while halfway through? You know, it's like, uh, CK3 is not so bad. It's like in a pretty solid spot right now. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I used to be, on release, I was very upset about how bare bones it was. And, but now I play quite a bit of CK3. I'm probably playing the most CK3 out of uh, any of the times that I've been playing CK3, and I've been really enjoying it. So um, CK3 gets a, uh, a tentative thumbs up from me. It's yeah, like Base God Joe says, it's uh, the best game they've launched in a while. That is true. It's not up against much, but it's true. It is actually it's a solid game. I say it every stream now, but I'd give it a six or a seven out of ten. Vic Three is a one or two out of ten. Imperator Rome is actually a different story. On launch it was like a one or two out of ten. Now it's a solid game itself. Six, seven, or eight out of ten. And I want to play it. I'm gonna play it on Twitch soon. Do you remember what happened the last time you played it on Twitch? Yeah, I got killed by you. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Yeah. But I'm doing single player this time. In so terms of the uh <laughs> yeah, you're hiding. So I have a chance. No. <laughs> The uh, the Pie Tucker Spud Gun, um, I think we're one apiece because uh, you thrashed me in Victoria too as well. When you played, you played as, you played as France? Oh, yeah, it was that Meme River one. What yeah, about the Hoi 4 games? Were we not opponents in that? or? Oh, I think I think we both lost. <laughs> Just I think everyone lost. everyone yeah, lost. Yeah, everyone those lost. Games. Yeah. I think that if I had to rank all this, because I haven't done as many streams as you, I could probably think of most of the streams that I've done roughly. That Hearts of Iron 4 stream was my least favourite stream I've ever done. I mean, I sort it's... of had fun, but I remember that moment. There was they were designed to be chill games. You played, but not too try hard. And then I had that guy in North Africa doing the sweaty la landings behind my lines without a port in North Africa, encircling me. 
and it was the most tryhard thing. One of the main tryhard moves used by all the big Hoi 4 players. And that pissed me off. Yeah. But whatever. It was a good times. I sort of had fun yeah. on that. I respect that it's some people's like uh, they love it, but uh Hearts of Iron 4 is just not for me. You know. I think some of the moderns I like like I like to see, I like to read about Hearts of Iron 4. <laughs> I don't like to play it. But like the modern community is really cool. I think that's really impressive what they've managed to do. Yeah. The mods are cool. The products are cool. The community, yeah. I don't know. Hard things. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's mostly fantastic people there, but when you drop the three letters T, I know. What do you think of? Uh, it's a mod, isn't it? Do you know? Yeah. Okay, I guess you don't know. That's fine. We'll leave it. <laughs> no, what's T now? T, I know it's one of the biggest mods for Hoi Four, but it's had a very controversial uh, past. Oh, yes. No. Probably a present. Fifty six. So that's probably the biggest mod that I know from Hearts of Iron. Although Hearts of Iron, I, did you play it around the time it uh, came out? Yes, I did. There was a beautiful moment. I don't know if you remember this, but there was a beautiful moment when Hearts of Iron was first released, where there was no multiplayer rules, and there were so many people playing it that you could just join any lobby, and it would just be fucking chaos. And it was so much fun. There was like I actually had such a blast doing that. Uh, I didn't play I multiplayer mean, initially when it came out. Unfortunately, I, I missed that. missed a lot. You did. You missed. You missed a special time there. I remember we had a game on launch day or something, and it was like uh, forty people, and I was in a voice chat with some guy who barely spoke English, and he was playing as Japan, and I was playing as Thailand. And we both we both went democratic or something. I can't remember. And you just have like. If all of it, just be nothing historical about anything that's going on. It was just pure chaos. Yeah. It was amazing. Sounds great. It Too bad I wasn't there. I just yeah. played single player. Had a decent amount of fun. It was all right. And then stopped playing it. Never really returned. Returned for a few meme one-off multiplayer games with the community in 2020 and 2021. Had a bit of fun. Decided, you know what? I hate the format of... The game's lasting like six to eight hours and most of that four to five hours being build up and then by the time you've done the build up you're tired yeah yeah i've, I've I definitely probably say i've watched more hearts of iron youtube videos than i've seen and i've played hearts of iron like tommy k's done some fun stuff like yeah. did the role play stuff that was really fun um there's a guy called uh toro or something like that he's a polish guy i can't remember it's t-a you are, are i think people might know but uh he's done like he does all the hardcore speed run crazy stuff and that stuff's pretty cool like the i think the speed run record for conquering the entire world is like an hour now or like yeah yeah that guy oh yeah i've heard the name yeah that guy's cool i like that guy uh he does like the hardcore speed run type stuff that's fun um or like difficult sort of achievements and things but no, there's actually some great creators for Hearts of Iron who have done some really fun stuff. Um, Numerous. There's so many. And many of them yeah. have become massive. ISP. Yeah, true. Somehow that game launched so much massive amounts of content. Huge content creators. And compare that to what's happened with Victoria 3. The amount of content that there's been for Hoi 4. The potential for content. The huge content creators that it's nurtured how many there are and then you compare that to victoria 3 where there's fuck all a few people doing a single player campaign hammer abbey is carrying the multiplayer scene of victoria 3 and as much as his content is fantastic and well edited he's not getting too many views on that because there's just no interest in that damn game and he admits that himself on his three hour stream so i'm not denigrating him by saying that he said it himself but yeah no and yeah. seriously his stuff is really impressive i'm really I'm, I'm seriously impressed with he does some really like the country that he's playing it'll do this cool graphic of you know this country on fire or something when he goes to war it's really cool stuff um i was gonna say that i remembered the other day Swad, how i originally found your channel and it was i came back to the channel for the uh battle of videos but i originally found it because i was trying to think of this guy's name his name's shinra do you remember that guy yeah the victoria yeah. videos yeah I he's found another old school it. yeah Shinra, he made great videos. <laughs> I don't know how they aged, but they were fun at the time. I really enjoyed them. 
the Mad Victoria videos. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I remember as well, but I like Shamra more. But still, shout out, shout out Rumba. Rumba's good. Yeah. Quill, Quill, uh, whatever his name is. Yeah, I mentioned he, these he? are all the Vic 2 diehards, but they also did sponsored sponsored videos of Vic 3 when it came out and didn't criticize it. So that was only to. Uh, never That was part of my video. Of the fucking. The Vic 3 Strongest Defender video. Where he said all the Vic 2 diehards are just shitting on Vic 3. No, those guys all love Vic 3. Yeah. They're all good guys, though. Yep. No, they are. Content's great. Great guys. Yeah. Um, They've all switched we... to streaming full time, I think, for the most part. Will. Yeah. It seems like a lot of people have moved away from YouTube. How, how do you feel about that? Because I it seems no. like streaming. Yeah. I'm sometimes the opposite way around. I don't. I wish I could do just YouTube, but I do enjoy streaming, and I can't. I can't go without streaming. I mean, this is fantastic right now. Yeah. Sometimes though, Victoria Two multiplayer streams really got to me, and I found it way too stressful to stream that. And streaming in general, I'm not too keen on, but I generally enjoy it. But I just a minute for the um, videos. I find streaming to be a lot more fun, and I find making videos to be a lot more creative. Like creatively fulfilling, like I feel like I'm making something that's uh, yes, that's right. I'm proud of, you know. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, although I think I had I had a stream where we played in that Victoria, um, that Victoria multiplayer, the Mean River one, where I had a whiteboard and I kept drawing pictures on it about my strategy, and that was funny. I, don't know, okay. I really enjoyed that. I kept crossing out nations, I crossed out Hungary when I smashed. Did them. you stream that? And you did yeah, that yourself? It. Yeah. Did you do the whiteboard it. thing on your stream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a. Uh, it, oh. was, it was. It was me, and I gesture to my uh, whiteboard when I <laughs> draw. I drew like a really shit map of Europe. It was good. I think I had a whiteboard thing uh, where I had my plan to beat you, and yeah, that didn't work. But... Oh, that was good. Yeah. That was a good time. We, we did quite well, though. I think I, I think I did better than I expected. I think we uh, got in circle I, or something. I remember it was very close. Yeah, I think it was like a multi-province or something that that fucked me. But I mean, we seriously got to wrap up soon. I know. I know saying we've got to wrap up is the cue for us yeah. to go on for ages, but this has been an extremely long stream already. Four hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I do want to wrap it up, actually. Yeah. It's going to be unwatchable. Might, it's too uh, long as a video. We might start, um, start not liking each other after a while. It's been too much yeah. time to go. It's going to be like um, that film with Willem Dafoe and... What is it? The Lighthouse? Oh, uh, yeah. I haven't seen it. We're gonna st I haven't um, seen it either. We're gonna st list. But it's something like, yeah. you know, we're going to start going insane. Yeah. Yeah, but we have to wrap up. But if you do donate, we'll watch we'll watch the lighthouse live. live yeah, here right we're now. gonna do an XQC live watching <laughs> yeah. of a film and yeah. get banned. Um, I had a question though, and uh, feel free we can wrap up now. But I, I I was gonna ask you this. I don't know if I've asked you this before, but um, out of all of your um your videos, which one would you say you're the most proud of in terms of proud how of... how it worked how um... it worked out? American Bloodbath Part Seven. I have. To, I, hope, great pick. I don't know if I necessarily think it's objectively more better or worse than other stuff, or if I'm more, but it's the one I always think about, and it might just yeah. be stuck in my mind because of random reasons. But it must be, yeah. American yeah, Bloodbath Part Seven, and then on top of that, the whole American Bloodbath. Oh uh, yeah, Base Joe didn't mention he's watching it, so we won't spoil anything. But um. Yeah, that campaign seemed like a perfect storm. For just I don't know whether the campaign, how much of it is you uh, making it fit that narrative in such an amazing way, and how much it just sort of slotted into place and just creating such an awesome story. It was just everything that happened just happened. It was all yeah. just what happened in the campaign. And I knew it would be an amazing story at the time, but I wasn't doing anything to make videos out of it. I was just playing. I don't know, that's what I always do. Another thing I'm proud of in terms of well-rounded, good content favourites of my own is uh, the Bernard and Belgium trilogy, I think. Ah, oh, it's a classic, yeah. That trilogy is a, a trilogy, first of all, is a great format. You don't get that yeah. much in my content. It's a trilogy, and then it's also well-rounded. The story is just so funny. Each video has its own unique little storyline, and they all come together. I love it. I fucking think it's great. I think I think the video I'm the most proud of making is the I can't remember which number it is maybe part nine or something of Napoleon's Legacy, um, where I did the recap because I hadn't made a video in the series for like six months in the stream highlight series, 
and uh, and so I I cut the entire thing from where we from the start to where we were to remind people, and I cut it to music. Uh, that was fun. I was that was really time consuming. Yeah, I'm a shocker for that. I'm such. I'm, I go like, oh, you know, I haven't made a video for a while, so I make it really fucking good. <laughs> and <then> it's like <laughs> I spend fucking ages doing it. I'm like, oh Jesus, this is why I don't make videos that often. <laughs> mm. the thing about the Bernard and Belgium trilogy is that I think it's a really good intro to Victoria Two multiplayer content because it has everything. It has. It's really funny, accessible. You get an idea of who's playing each country, the characters develop, and uh, you also get a bit of war. You get a bit of war analysis. You get really funny, random shit happening. You get some nation building in Belgium, and you get just, it has it all. It has it all in a, in a, in a small one, trilogy. Am I remembering it correctly where Belgium gets like exiled to like uh, the yeah. Caribbean or something like that? Yeah, that's what I did in that one. Yeah, and I think play. it's probably the way I formatted that one it was part two of the trilogy is just such a plot twist I intentionally like if if I just edited the campaign normally and chronologically you'd see me going off and getting Java and going to the Caribbean but I decided to edit that out and leave it and then have a build up to it and then go back and show you what you missed essentially because well, I edited mm. it I, kind of, I didn't explain that well but I'll uh I'll tell you one thing as well, a little behind the scenes thing, because um, my favorite part of uh, Napoleon's Legacy campaign that never made it into a video, um, because it was right at the end of the session before the session that didn't have any other audio except your own, um, yeah. was how Jonas had all of the Netherlands in, um, in uh, Indonesia. Like he had. He had you know, I because then that mod, and the, you know, the Netherlands is exiled to Indonesia, and they're really they're quite powerful still. But um, you guys had a crisis to release Indonesia as a free as a free tag, and he ended up having Batavia as one province, like a one province capital. We went from oh, losing yeah. all of Indonesia, and all of you guys, there's just like I was fucking laughing my head off when I was editing it because there's just no sympathy for poor old fucking Jonas. You guys are just laughing your fucking heads off. And I think, I can't remember, but I think Jonas says something or he types something where he's like, can we roll back so I can keep playing my, my country? And you guys are just Aww. fucking laugh at him. <laughs> so funny. Fantastic. Speaking of that sort of thing, in, I can uh, reveal in the next Bavaria episode that I'm working on now, there's a bit of that. There's a bit of misery happening to other countries that I laugh at and others laugh at. I'm just saying, you don't, you don't know who it's going to be against, but it's going to happen yeah and i think it'll be really funny yeah i'm looking forward to it i've uh yeah no i always i always watch um i always watch the videos i don't think i've missed any of the videos for a really long time actually i sometimes don't have time to to catch all the streams well that's because you're um, sponsored yeah but also also it's the time frame for me it's always it's such a you know such a terrible thing living in such a fucking a country in the middle of nowhere you know but it is well, what it is. Yeah, you and your little intelligence agency with two people at a desk reading the newspaper, wishing they were doing that psyop they're reading about, but they're not because they're only in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. Probably we could move ourselves closer to everything else. You know what, actually? What if it was New Zealand that was behind the recent Wagner coup in Russia? Maybe that was New Zealand's psyop. They just, you know what? New Zealand, we, we've done no psyops through history. Our intelligence agency's shit. We're small. Let's just pull that one out of nowhere for no reason. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's like theorizing all about that. What, who is the psyop? Who was behind it? What was the agenda? It was New Zealand. There you go. Yeah. Also, it would be would be the perfect people to do psyops because we've had a lot of psyops done to us. Like yeah. uh, the French. I don't know. Have you guys have you have, have you read about the uh, or heard about the Rainbow Warrior before? I think you've told us about a French psyop in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, they snuck in. Yeah. They snuck into French spies snuck into New Zealand. They blew up a boat that was um, protesting their atomic uh, testing in New Caledonia. Fantastic, and uh, they got caught, and uh, and then they had a child. It was a man and a woman, and then they had a kid together, and so they were released on um, clemency <laughs> because of that. I don't know why. Wow. The other the other thing as well is um, oh, America as well because we banned um, their nuclear submarines. 
for coming to New Zealand and did the uh, CI, did some stuff, allegedly. Hmm. What, what's, what's the name, the name of the, of the YouTuber, YouTuber, YouTuber was doing this with? You mean this or... I mean this right now, it's Pie Chucker. There you go. But to be fair, your name isn't fully shown today. Yeah, just Pie. If you put your real username on, it'll show P dot 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 because of the new Discord username. If you go back and watch the start of the stream, you can learn about that, uh, Connor or anyone else yeah. interested. It's the first time I've ever been referred to as a YouTuber, by the way. Yeah. A YouTuber. Yeah, that feels good. I've started but... TGC as well. Anyone else having trouble raising and keeping soldier pops? Is that a mod? It is, isn't it? It's the one I've been playing recently, actually. So, um, I don't know about TGC soldier pop promotion approach demotion. I I actually had that problem in Spain for a while. It's actually probably down to your admin efficiency, which is much more difficult to get in TGC, and that affects pop promotion. I think that's the reason. So, try and get yourself some admin efficiency, encourage some bureaucrats. But now, we have to wrap it up. There aren't any. There isn't anyone giving us the super chats to not wrap it up. So it is time to wrap no, it up, and it's it been four hours. Working. Jesus Christ! Yeah. But it's been really fun, and we had loads of interesting topics. It was great. We did. It's three thirty. Oh my goodness! It's four thirty. It's three thirty in the morning. It's four thirty in the afternoon. You got your whole life yeah. ahead of you, but life. Well, I don't know about my life ahead of me. I've got an evening <laughs> yeah, ahead dinner. of me. Yeah, I know to go. Nice day, but you're going to go to sleep and you're going to wake up the next day feeling fresh in the morning oh. and you're going to have a full day ahead of you. Yes, I will. Also, also, the, the last thing I'll say, I'll end on this on a very positive note. I bought some crepes for breakfast tomorrow and they, oh. are, they are allegedly authentic French crepes and they have hazelnut and chocolate in them. Do they so have marinara sauce in them? Uh, they could. If marinara, uh, <laughs> we're not. I'm not begging anymore. <laughs> no, but it's always it's always a pleasure. It's never a chore. Thank you, everyone uh, who came and uh, listened to us chat shit for hours. And um, we said some interesting stuff, and we looked at some really really cool games. Some games I'm actually really excited about. Um, yeah. Yeah. Some get like and a lot of these games looking absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's nice to see that through incompetence there's this big gap in the market and it's actually getting filled up with some really interesting ideas yeah there's just this one big manward sized gap in the market <laughs> uh, cleric thank you so much for two dollar super chat because i answered your question well that's nice of you i'm glad i could help you and uh normally it's the other way around normally people give a super chat asking the question and then i might answer it or not but this time yeah, yeah. No, but thank you, and thanks for all the other super chats. Thanks for the moderation in the chat. If there wasn't really any required, but some mods were around. Thanks for that, and uh, thank you, Pie Chucker, for coming on. It's a pleasure again. Had a lot of fun. Absolutely, I had a great time. And you can catch me on the next uh, Gilded Destiny trailer video. I'll be doing the narration. He's right already actually. signed that contract live on stream behind that. the scenes. Yeah, yeah I've. Uh, I've gone to the careers tab and I've, I've I've done my LinkedIn. I don't have a LinkedIn. I used to actually, but I didn't update it for years and people you just look at made it. a new LinkedIn on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my LinkedIn would say like a uh, builder's apprentice. I hadn't worked in construction in like four years. And so it's just like people, people would message me and be like, oh, you want a building job, mate? And I'd be like, fuck. I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't it, walk 4K now. <laughs> I can't it, fucking go build anything. A builder doesn't seem like the sort of profession that would have a LinkedIn account. It doesn't That's come a across very that good way. point. Again, I think it's just because I was a 16 year old and I wanted to be professional. And uh, having a LinkedIn felt professional. Even though, uh, yeah. even though it's really, it's really not. I don't have a link there. Uh, the Hutch, just the last question here I'll answer. Uh, will you do Hearts of Victoria again? If anyone does host a World War II, I'd love to play it and stream it and then potentially edit a video out of it. That shit is a lot of fun. Way more fun than Hearts of Iron 4. Oh my god. The, he's referring, of course, to the World War II mod Victoria 2 sessions. Single session wars. Just love them. They were really fun. But, uh, yeah. Two questions. Two quick ones. Will you ever oh. do... Will you ever do Victoria 2 community multiplayer again? 
Uh, oh, um, it's difficult. It's stressful and difficult to host that sort of thing, but it is. I can't rule it out. Might do it again. Could do. Maybe. And and uh, how many weeks away are we from Shovel Face Part Three? Um, the same, the same <laughs> week that Grey Eminence comes out. Oh no! I'm sorry, <laughs> but if I do get that one million dollar funding, I'll make it. Oh well, I'm not spoiling anything, but the end to that fucking session was outstanding. I'm not saying it because I was the primary catalyst. <laughs> <laughs> nonsense that went on. Yeah, it's, it was so good, but think of, I'm, I, the reason I put off making Shovel Face 3 is because, first of all, that session was from so long ago. CK3 yes. had just come out. It's really yeah. irrelevant. Second of all, it wouldn't get that many views anyway, like 10k views. Yeah, I think and... that I think that you're underestimating because the Shovel Face stuff that you have made is really good, but you didn't, you haven't quite gotten to the the real nonsense, the real crazy part of the yeah. campaign. Yeah. What if we uploaded it on your channel or you edited it or I I don't know. You'd have to give me the footage. I could. Um, but uh, yeah, that could be great. Because that, I remember I made a meme and it was just fucking great. Because I, 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 this is not spoiling anything at all, but I will just say that I had a character who had like 59 learning. And uh, it was it just led to total shenanigans. It was fantastic. I can't even remember your 59 learning. We can... What, what? Yeah, I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't spoil anything, but uh, yeah, you basically, I sold you, uh, I sold you down the river. I told you to follow me into war, and uh, it did not go well for you at all. Yeah. It's very fun. Well, now we've got to actually wrap it up. Thank you, and absolutely. See you. See you later, soon. See you later, everybody else. Maybe when uh, you wake up tomorrow, you can message me about those games you recommended, and I'll message you back I about will. the CK three footage. That sounds great. All right, see you guys Maybe. later. Bye bye. Bye. As for you, chat, I'll say goodbye to you now. Uh, once again, shout out to all the games that we've talked about here. Go to Guild of Destiny, join the Discord, check them out. And uh, Spocracy as well. And the, the Armchair Historians project isn't far along enough that he's actually publicising it or anything like that. But just keep it in mind. I thought I'd do an early talk about it since he's publicly uh, he's publicly shown it on his second channel and stuff. So I just thought I'd talk about it because it's really interesting what he's doing. City Skylines 2 doesn't need to be publicised by me. If you want that game, check it out. And, yeah, that's it. Thanks, everyone, for the Super Chats, for support, and uh, Bavaria Part 4 coming today. No, t not today, sorry. Tomorrow or Saturday. The next two days, guaranteed. Okay, thanks, everyone. Bye.